You are listening to the Lucha Central Podcast Network. And now, LuchaCentral.com presents Masks, Matt, and Mayhem. I ain't been drinking, drinking drunk drunk on this show in a long time. Welcome to another edition of Mass Mats and Mayhem. I'm your host, the Outlaw LA Red. You can find me on social media at Justin Harvey 75. You can find the entire show on social media at MMM Show 75. We're back. Like, we're back, back, officially back because there's one, two, three, four, five of us here today. How did that happen? What is that shirt? What is that obscene shirt? That's a place it's, you get lunch. Lucha Gringo Africa. over there. I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to this guy. What's going on, Casey? Oh, I, I, I think we're going to have a commercial for that that we should play right now. The following announcement has been paid for by Professor Casey. I don't think we're going to have that. <laughs> <laughs> How's this for your announcement, Byron? <laughs> so um, for our audio listeners, of which there are countless thousands now. oh really apparently yeah like the audio version is doing better than the ver- video version so if you're watching us you're one of the few lucky ones but if you're listening to us you are one of the the thousands of people that get to hear us every week so Dude, they're they're the really lucky ones because they don't have to see our fucking faces let's no, be real there, yeah. were, there were thousands on facebook too which seems to be the hot new thing maybe people just aren't uh, glomming onto the youtube like the facebook these days don't know don't know what that is mm-hmm. but whatever um, anyway, well, what I can say, around, Justin, is we all got something for them to glom on right here. Yeah. We got something for them to glom on right here. Case is wearing back. the hot new piece of merchandise that you can get right now. Um, it is the fuck you. Here is Casey shirt based on the Gato and Jado shirt. Yep. Gato and Jado shirt. Jado. Why do yes. I want to say Jado? Because he's because you've been you've been watching too many Victor Quinones promos. That's what it is. <laughs> um. Anyway, the shirt's hot. It's flying off the shelves. Get yours before we discontinue it because it is a limited edition. It is available right now at teespring.com forward slash bazooka Casey. Correct. 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 And right. I do say it's flying off the shelves because we've sold three and I bought all three of them. So make it four. Or I'm never doing this show again. That it, I'm holding it ransom to this audience. I have to sell at least one more shirt or I quit. And this might be the last shirt that we do solo. I don't know. We're going to have to find out. Depending on how this shirt goes, um, we may cut a deal with uh, our overlords at Mass Republic to do the next one. We'll see how that goes. Oh, dude. I got so much heat with those guys. Uh, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Save it for the wall of shame, Casey. Uh, I'm sure it's worthwhile. Hey, did you guys hear this shit about uh, Stu Bennett talking about Lucha Underground finally? No, who the yeah. fuck? Who yeah. the fuck who Wade the fuck Barrett. Stu- oh, okay. okay. Wade Barrett, Stu Bennett, that guy. I've got that was some great. bad news for you. The guy, <laughs> the guy that's in a movie called like Vengeance Retaliation, like that's not the same word twice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're a legitimate yeah. bare knuckle boxer. So, you know. Okay. Have you seen him bare knuckle box? I'd, I'd, no. I'd be down to watch him bare knuckle box. That'd be I dope. saw him. I saw like clips of him. You know, for those, for those great, a fight between him and cross. For those yep. of you that just joined us, Justin said he would like to see Wade Barrett's box. <laughs> That's close. Bad, no, close. Bad. So anyway, um, Wade, Wade is coming out and he's not necessarily, uh, not coming out, but he's Pride Month. talking about, yeah. he's talking about Lucha Underground a little bit. Pride Month's over, man, but that doesn't mean, oh, you can't get, oh it's July now. I'm sorry. I have speaking no of which, go back and listen to our Sunny Kiss episode. It's yes, amazing. Please do. Great episode. Um, so no, he's just talking a little bit about like how he got involved in Lucha Underground and, and basically, uh, you know, kind of starting to, to say what happened there and talking about his, um, League of Extraordinary White Men, as I like to call it, uh, mm-hmm. angle that they had going in Lucha Underground. But yeah, he's basically said that, you know, the plan was not fully formulated, but that he was going to come in and lead this faction of the gods that was invading. Um, they really just wanted him for the last episode of season four. They were hoping to get a pickup for season five. He was on board to come in and participate in some of that, but it was a no brainer for him to do season four without having to commit because he was already going to be in LA shooting a movie came out, did the deed, um, and basically he was going to be the leader of the, you know, 
white overlord Aztec god. Possibly. What was his right. name again? So what they did is they came to me and they said, Wade, I mean, Stu, you're really white. And we need you to beat all of our Mexican stars because you're really white. But first, we can't have you wrestle yet. We need you to just sit in a limo and look really white. In his defense, I will say that he was not personally responsible for beating any real luchadors. No, he wasn't, but he is, he is personally responsible for killing Lucha Underground as a show because he's the last image before it went off the air. So it's yeah. his fault automatically. That's how it works. That's why when we end this uh, every episode of so the show, I hear off the hook. Hey, let say. You're letting Swagger off the hook for being the final champion, Jake Hagar, Jake Strong. The strong, same person. Strong, strong, strong. strong but he strong. just say he's got some bad news, and the bad news is that there's no season five. There you go. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, is exactly. there no season five? I just spoke to Robert, <laughs> yes. dun, dun, dun. and I'm afraid I got some bad news for you from Univision. I'm going to say that I honestly believe at That's some me doing point. doing the gavel. I believe at some point gavel. in time there will actually be a Lucha Underground season five, six, and mm. seven, and mm. that Stu Bennett will not be a part of it in any fashion, <laughs> nor, nor will 87% of the original cast. I think what they're going to do is they're going to listen. Iowa. They're going to listen to Casey. They're going to listen to his cool ideas. They're going to be like, why do we need to call it Lucha Underground? Let's just call it Fucked Up Deathmatch Show, just like Casey suggested. And we're going to just, yeah, we'll have some luchadors. Sure. Should we I'm film that in gonna... 23? I've, I've got a personal correspondence going with Jeffrey Briggs already about the new Lucha Underground wrestling. So we're going to make this oh, happen. Dude, well, I got, a personal, I got a personal correspondence with Joe Bob Briggs. And he says that there's some serious aardvarking going on when it comes to that Lucha Underground trademark. Uh, I believe it. It's It's some nonsense. Listen. Um, before we get to the second part of this Thunder Rosa interview, because if you guys thought last week's episode with Thunder Rosa was the shit this week, she actually gets fired up. Like that was nothing. She was chill. Her coffee kicked in for the second. Oh, episode. dude, I'm sorry. She was so mad at me for not doing the episode. Oh, she's, uh, she was, she was not, she was not pleased. She thought she took it as a personal slight and she, said that, uh, she asked if we wanted to purchase a custom video of her whooping your ass in mission pro uh she does they do custom videos and you can just pay, pay to have a match so all we got to do is send you to tejas and uh put you in the ring with mel and she will whoop your monkey ass for us so wait so oh, we, know, we know someone that runs a wrestling promotion now is what you're saying yeah yeah we legit <laughs> know a, a wrestling for women. owner booker for yeah. women but she oh. but obviously yeah. she had no problem with with putting you in a custom match, dude. Your ass. All look. All I'm saying is that this this promotion, this death match promotion, can happen with or without Eric Van Wagner's involvement. Is what I'm saying. Is oh, what I'm saying. I get, I get. I get you. I get you. Well, highest you bidder, and by highest bidder, I mean whoever's willing to let us bleed on their apron. All right, CCD Casey's custom death match. CCD in the kitchen. That's that's the new promotion. Oh, right dude! I bet Kicks no one's done deathmatch custom tapes. That could get that, <laughs> that could, could get, get pretty that could get gnarly. Well, that's I think like the way you have bring to, the way you have to do that is you'd have to say you'd have to say okay, you don't get to pick the wrestlers. You get to pick the deathmatch that you want, and then we'd have to go out and find the wrestlers that would actually do that shit. Honestly, dude, we're in fucking Hollywood. We just special effects that shit. We don't have to have anyone really getting their limbs cut off. We just fake it. Do you remember no, what was it? Bum what fights. Up? This just sounds like bum fights all over again. Shush. Shush your mouth. Oh, I'll, this fight, is more like, I'll fight your bum, me. This is more like Kimbo Slice, Jorge Masvidal stuff, man. This isn't bum fights. Anyway, listen. Yes. Here's the last thing I want to talk about before we get to that interview. Cody Rhodes, or Cody whatever he's allowed to be called outside of WWE, Runnels. Just, just, just plain Cody. Just my, plain my, Cody. my theory is that they didn't renew his copyright, the Rhodes copyright. And he was he put in for it, and then during the whole um, speak out thing, um, wait, I don't know. Hold on, well, I missed. I don't know where I, I don't know where this go this joke was going. I don't even know where it's yeah. going. I was just going to ask you if if him being the TV champ is working or not. Oh, I yeah, have, a, no, sure. I just, I have a theory. Yeah. I have a don't, theory. Don't put the belt on Pentagon. There's a theory. I have a theory that there's a reason they went and blocked his uh, try to copyright his name. Um, but I don't know if I heard something in confidence or if I heard something like I read on Twitter. 
Oh, I told you in confidence, Byron. You can't tell that story on the show. Fuck our listeners. I like his TV I'm show. Gonna... I think he's seven good matches. I think he had a much better match with Hager than Mox did. You know, you know what, who would be a great TV champion? Pentagon. Who's that? Pentagon. Yeah. Great TV champion. I mean, I'm, not, champ. I'm not really. I'm not really opposed to it. I like the fact that he is. He's kind of trying to just show everyone what they expect of the TV champ. It feels kind of like old school NWA almost. Yeah. Uh, no, they're good matches. I like Cody as a person. He's not going to fuck up and ruin things for the company. So I love him there too. And you know, I mean like on a personal level, he's not going to do dipshit stuff and fuck everything up for the rest of the company. So I'm all for him being champion. Here's what I'd love, Casey. I'd love for both Byron and Meeflo to unscrew some more things right into their microphones while somebody's talking. That sounds yeah, like a have a couple great idea for radio. Have a couple more cats. Fuck, guys. Have a couple uh, more cats. So, you know, I'm just having some crybabies. It's I fine wonder, if you want to. If you want I this to be a marketing podcast, that's oh. fine. Uh, like, you have to hear the whole box. The whole I like, I like how Justin is complaining about Byron eating candy, and Byron's candy is literally called crybaby tears. That is <laughs> tremendous. His candy is not as good as mine. I got a whole box of Bean Boozled. Do you guys know anything about these? Oh, I know. Yeah, dude, you're going to you're gonna, you're gonna get that Dookie Bean, bro. You're going to get the uh, Dookie Bean. The flavors are on there, and they are – every other flavor is horrendous. Jelly okay, Jelly. so Rotten Egg. Yeah. yeah. Rotten Egg's the absolute worst thing. I gave no, them to a spoiled guy. Spoiled milk. It, spoiled milk. Oh, fuck that, dude. That didn't exist when I had them. But, so bad. Uh, Rotten egg, we gave it to a guy blind, asked him to guess the flavor, and his guess was fart. And that's actually pretty fucking accurate. Super sulfury, nasty. Mm-hmm. It's gross. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, Co- Cody is TV champ. I, I I kind of feel it. I don't know. Jim, do you even watch AEW? I mean, yeah, after NXT. <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, whoa. Uh, yeah, I think, he, honestly, like, there's no better person to have on the title right now to not only, as you said, Casey, represent the company, but... Uh, also show that he is that old school type champion. Uh, and, you know, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, they can get the actual belt that they want while he's still champion. So we can just get an idea of how he's supposed to look as that champion. Right. Mm-hmm. I can see that. Yeah. They got to figure that out before the toy gets made too. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's another issue. It's also, well, it's, he's doing the John Cena U S champ run where he wanted to showcase you wanted to have a good match that showcases opponents. Oh, oh, week. and speaking of breaking toy news, gentlemen, breaking toy news. Jazzwares, makers of the AEW toys, are also making the UFC action figures. Did you guys see that? Ooh, interesting. Like that. What, and they, like that look, we had. they look sweet. Nah, I don't know about that. <laughs> they they look like something. Um, they okay. they gave them all cloth shorts which is a little yeah. weird. Like if they're all wearing the same shorts, why don't you fucking mold the shorts? You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially uh, because of the fact that they have an actual uniform, <laughs> but maybe, maybe that's because the Reebok deal is up this year. Oh, that could be, but and then also, that, that way they could switch everything quickly. If they need to, they also come with alternate hands. There's closed hands and then there's kind of open hands. So yes, the John Jones figure comes with eye gouge fingers, basically yeah. because he's got those open hands. Jab so you can open hand. Jab with could, an open hand. You can poke some eyes with that shit. And also, Donald Cerrone gets a figure, and everyone needs one of those in their life. A with Donald Cerrone hat. does it? Yes. Does it come with an expanding beer gut? Like it, the, okay, the in comes, fight Donald Cerrone that's got abs, and then the out of fight Donald Cerrone that's jumping out of an airplane with a beer gut. Actually, what it does is it comes with a Donald Cerrone with no beard, and then one with beard. It's like the exact same face, so you can just switch it. Everyone else has an expression, but Cerrone doesn't. He just has different facial hair on his uh, faces, which is hey, pretty funny. We're, we're kind of talking about AEW. I, I want to ask you guys. I know we talked about Sammy G a little bit last week, but now I'm seeing like a lot more kerfluffle online about this thing, and it's like a lot oh, of people are like, thing. he said he's he obviously made. A terrible comment. He he mm-hmm. was talking a, literally made a joke about raping Sasha Banks. If you mm-hmm. haven't heard it, I mean it was it was foul. It was uncalled for. It wasn't very funny. It was total, totally the Michael Richards moment. Like it was bad. It was four years ago. He was twenty two years old. He did not work for AEW at the time. Um, a lot of people think that that is cause enough that 
AEW shouldn't be letting him go without pay when there's actual people who are out there accused of abuse and rape and did terrible things. And he just said something. I don't know if I just, dis- I, I, I don't know if I disagree with people having that opinion that what he did, they still want to see him around. But at the same time, when I saw the, the punishment that was levied to him personally, I was like, okay, yeah, that punishment of all the things that I've seen so far fits the crime. Like he and said honestly, something really bad and out of context. People need to be taught not to do that publicly, especially for, you know, when you work for public companies that have right. moralities clauses that you cannot do stuff like that. It was out of line and people should never do stuff like that again. And that a lesson had to be taught and that Sammy will get a chance to come back. Cody has publicly announced that he will be coming back to AEW after uh, he goes through some counseling, after he understands the nature of what he did. And after he loses a whole bunch of his money to, women's abuse causes and honestly the people complaining about the severity of the punishment or lack thereof they're not employees of a company that probably had an existing policy for this that they're enacting right now maybe maybe not maybe this is they're just like fuck now we need a policy but yeah uh, they also have part of the contract for the company uh so they're not in they're not really in the position to complain about the punishment because it's an inside thing. It's just a very public business. I don't know. I think, I think what they're doing is the right thing. And I, I don't think it's too extreme. I also don't think it's not extreme enough um, because there's a lot of other fucked up people that need to be dealt with in more of a fashion. And uh, he knows what he said is wrong and he's getting punished for it. And uh, we can leave it at that. Yeah, I think this one was quick and easy for for a lot of reasons, and that's probably a good thing. Like there needed to be one kind of open and shut case because a lot of these other things are very complicated. Oh, a lot of them are going to take serious investigation and things like that. But when they do get investigated, I think that they're going to be dealt with in a much more extreme manner than this. Oh, Jimmy Havoc's gone. Yeah, oh, no, he's, he's coming. He's gone. He's I don't. Going, I don't, he's, I don't he's, think the rehab thing is the. He, I think he's going, and they're never bringing him back. Jimmy Havoc is probably gone just because he's not going to get to the other side. Like he's a trouble person going through problems, and he's not going to stabilize enough to come back. I think. Well, um, and that is that is part of this thing too. Is like you know, I, I think a lot of people are shocked, but you have to understand. Like I work in reality TV, so does Byron. Yeah, and we're around people all the time that are you know, wanting to be in the spotlight. And I'm not saying that this is bad. Like all wrestlers are bad. Like comedians, if you know, are a certain type of person and they're, they're a little bit broken by nature. It's the same with wrestlers and people who want to be actors and a lot of musicians there's, and this isn't all of them. I'm not like globalizing every person in these industries, but you, you understand at a certain point in time that there's a certain amount of brokenness that, that gives you the superpower to be able to do something in entertainment in this kind of way. You have to have a certain level of resolve. You have to have a certain kind of crazy to go into a wrestling ring and take a bump every week. And you have to have an extra kind of crazy to be doing death matches. Yeah. And you add in the constant pain and the drugs and the alcohol and, and bad scenarios and people with lucid addictions and kinks. And all of a sudden, damn bad shit happens. Lots of, lots of death match dudes are the nicest people you'll ever meet. And they would never fuck someone over like that too. But yeah, because you know what? Them motherfuckers are tired after an event. They're not trying to go out to the after party and do shit. They want some Vicodin, a whiskey and a bed. And to find some, (laughs) and to pick the glass out of their back. Exactly. Um, anyway, the Sammy G thing, I I just didn't know if you guys, I just like, I'm really surprised that it keeps going. We had, we had reached out. Uh, to each other and I think we both had the same exact reaction Um, two things I think one thing to consider this is also something that happened four years ago he hasn't shown anything and I'm not defending what he said at all but let's just like objectively look at where he's at now he hasn't exhibited that behavior recently and there's no reason to think without hearing what happened that he would say something like that so now you're just you're going to punish him at a job he has now for something that he did four years ago. That in itself 
is a bit of a that's a bit of a stretch. I mean, that I think prevents that them from honestly. Out. That is something that wouldn't hold up in court, probably, if he decided well, to fight this. But he would also never have a job in AEW again if he tried to fight this. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I don't know that that Tony Khan is, I don't, is that kind of vindictive. Like, I think Tony very much separates business from personal. But to me, uh, look. I, I'm not trying to defend anybody. I'm I'm saying this about Sammy. I would like to see Sammy turn into one of the good ones. I don't right. think that all human beings are un, ir, irredeemable that do right. something bad. And I think that yeah. his his level of bad was absolutely atrocious. Should be dealt with. Should be a punishable thing um, for everybody from now on. And even if you reach back in time a few years to do it. Oh, well, you know, and, and, and I've, I've done comedy, man. I did mean spirited joke humor, you know, and, and I think back to some of the stuff I've said and I'm like, yeah, you know, have I learned my lesson from those things? And I certainly have. And, and, but if somebody was to reach back and punish me for something that I said back then, now I wouldn't necessarily think it was totally unfair because yeah, I mean, it, those lessons need to be taught now. Yeah. Imagine what we, I'm not being funny, but imagine us five, if we decided to take a camera back to us hanging out with our mates when we were 15 to 22. Yeah. I mean, Sammy was literally 22 when he said that and it was, it was stupid and somebody should have slapped him in the yeah. mouth then and not yeah. get away with it. Anyway, just, I don't want to harp just, on it. I, I just want to say, even with what I was saying, it's, he very much deserves specifically yeah. and also just out of principle with what everything's going through right now. He deserves a punishment and a statement should have been made about him. Yeah, and I don't think his career is over. I think that the goal of Tony Khan and Cody Rhodes at this point in time is to rehabilitate Sammy, to make him one of the good ones, like I believe both of them are. I would be very surprised to see anything about either of them, honestly. Um, and and to turn him into the kind of person that he should be and that they want to represent wrestling, and then to give him another shot six months or a year from now or whatever, um, probably they'll work him back in slowly. And he was, I mean, he was wrestling side by side with Chris Jericho. That's a big deal for a guy his age right, to be right. that far in his career. There were some good stories coming out about him. Yeah. And a lot of, well, look, a lot of people are defending him. I'm, I'm going to tell those people right now, don't defend him. You cannot yeah. defend what he said to me. Yeah. You just can't stop trying to do that. Stop saying, Oh, it was just a joke. It was just a rib. That's part of the culture of wrestling that has to change. Nah, and, and we've seen how Sasha Banks felt about it too. So that statement that. was uncalled for. Right. It was too much. And it yeah. was personally directed at somebody else, whether it was a joke or not. So it was inappropriate and it and it deserves to, it deserves to be noted. Anyway, yeah. listen, there is something positive coming that something positive is coming right now. From our friend Thunder Rosa, you got to check out the second part of this interview. We did it last week, and it is fire. It was so hard for me and Byron to not put it out last week, but we were just like, "Oh, it's kind of long. We got to break it up in two parts." But the second half of this interview is the better half. Don't mean to say fooled you from last week because last week was damn good too. But this is the better half. So quickly, Denise. Quickly tell me what's happening on the Lucha Central Podcast Network right now so we can get to Thunder Rosa. Hey, everyone. It's Denise Salcedo here in Lucha Central Central, where they look at all of the great shows available this week on the Lucha Central Podcast Network. Monday, it's a brand new Lucha Libre Figures and Facts, where Eric and Jeff not only talk about a classic WCW Vampiro action figure from Toy Biz, but they get joined by the superstar himself just days before the debut of his new show on the Al Rey Network, Vampiro Unleashed. Tuesday, Mass, Mats, and Mayhem has part two of their interview with Thunder Rosa, and she drops all the goods on being the first Mexican women's champ in NWA, her citizenship, backstage bullies in wrestling, getting out of her Lucha Underground contract, the Women of Wrestling TV series, and more. Also on Tuesday, Wrestle Boss with Fabi Chulo live covering pro wrestling and MMA from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Pacific. This week, Fabi talks wrestling with Lucha Libre Voz promoter DJ Voz ahead of the company's huge upcoming iPay-Per-View event. And on the MMA side of things, World Sambo Championships competitor Giovanni Varela stops by the show to talk about representing Honduras in the tournament. 
Head to WrestleBossLive.com to listen live or downloaded Wednesday across podcast platforms. Wednesday nights live on Facebook, it's Spanish show La Mesa de los Margaros, giving you both the news and the chisme from around the lucha world. Plus, this week, owner of one of the world's largest Lucha Libre masks and memorabilia collections, like literally, museums call this guy when they want to do a Lucha Libre exhibit. Christian Simet joins the show along with general manager of the Perros del Mar brand, Pan de Mal, as they talk licensing and merchandising in Mexico. Thursdays, it's straight out of the bodega with Papo Esco, and this week, Vinny Massaro pulls up to the shop for part two of his interview, where the trio will talk about his recent international travels to Mexico and Japan, as well as getting the call to train Cain Velasquez for his pro wrestling debut in AAA. On Friday, it's your double dose of Lucha Centro weekly podcast, one in English y el otro en español. Lucha Central Weekly is where you'll find all the top stories of the week, both inside and out of the ring from Mexico and anywhere luchadores are in action across the globe. Find out what's happening in empty arenas across Mexico, including the new Lucha Time Promotions Weekly TV series and how to watch it, as well as lucha action in WWE, NXT, and AEW. Be sure to subscribe and follow all of your favorite Lucha Central Network series on your favorite podcast platforms. And please be sure to give a rating and review to help more fans find the shows that you love. For now, this is Denise Salcedo signing off from Lucha Central Central. Have a great week. Imagine all that pressure that I had. And like I remember my, my friend, uh, um, he was like, Melissa, if you lose, you know you had a lot more to lose than the other chick. Nobody knows this other chick. They all know you. Yeah. You know, so if you lose, make sure you lose by decision or by split decision, not yes. by getting choked. Go out chaos. on a stretcher. You you got yes. to. In this particular case, this is not a lay down and take it moment. You got to go out on a stretcher, if at all. I get it. Yeah. So <laughs> um, so I get in there and um, I was fucking like I was nervous. I was terrified. As soon as they locked that door. I just remember one of my friends told me, Melissa, you're closer to God than you will ever been. Enjoy the moment and kick this bitch ass. Or at least try to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so the first the first round was all right. You know, I, I got punched in the nose and I started bleeding. I was like, all right, this is how it's going to be. And then I didn't feel anything because my coach was like, you're going to get punched and you're not going to feel anything. Your adrenaline's going to be running and you just keep going. You know, the second round, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. She takes me down because I was trying to get take her down. She takes me down. And as she's taking me down, it was like probably 15 seconds before the end of the, of the thing. She uh, cuts me wide open right here with an elbow. I didn't even feel it. I just started bleeding, right? And I just saw red when I got up and I just heard everybody like, <gasps> you know? And I was like, man, what the fuck? <laughs> you know? And then I get I get it, sit down. I'm not even breathing hard. And I just look at my coaches and, and the cut man. And I'm like, hey, coach, am I doing well? And he just looked at me like, Yes, you're doing well. You know? <laughs> yeah, one more round, have fun, you know? And I remember the last round, I was just smiling at, at my opponent. And I was like, I was like, thanks. Thanks, bitch. Okay, let's have fun. And then we just started fucking going at it. I mean, and at the end, I mean, she won. But uh, but, I but it was a decision. You got yeah. to the cards. Yes. And then the cool part was she wins. And I feel like I was rocky, you know, because yeah. everybody's like, Canting my name, and I was like, Ugh! of course, like ugly ass face crying, and I'm like, oh my god. Hey, people, people forget that Rocky lost in that first movie. Come on now, <laughs> you can't win them all. And honestly, I watched it. I was super proud of you. I thought it was an amazing performance, and it was just like, to me, to me, when they closed that cage door, I know you were probably shitting a brick, but to me, I was like. That was the moment where I was like, okay, it doesn't even matter now. She did it. She got all the way in that cage and she is about to put hands on this other girl for better or for worse. No matter what, she did the training. She did the time. She got in there. She's standing up in this girl's space. And then you went after it. And it's funny too. The, the end of our show, I always say, stay calm and stay in the mix, which is actually something a corner man said to me between rounds once. And I was getting that weird adrenaline dump because I was so nervous. I didn't know what was going on and i was kind of i was breathing too much and the adrenaline was happening wrong and he just said stay calm stay in the mix because that was all he wanted me to do he didn't even want me to win it wasn't even about winning at that point and i'm pretty <laughs> sure that i got 
clowned really hard after that anyway. But the, <laughs> but the point was like, people don't understand the, the way your adrenaline goes crazy. And if it happens too soon, you are fucked. It is the worst thing ever. And those first few big fights, especially in front of people, your adrenaline comes at all the wrong times and you have to like find this way to level it out just to get through it right. But I could tell, you know, in that second round that you had totally leveled out. And I was just thinking to myself the whole time, like, come on, Mel, stay calm, stay in the mix. You got this. And it was great. Mm -hmm. and, and you did. I thought you, you actually handled it exactly the way that you're supposed to. And you know what? It was like so interesting because she had at least and then Ryan is watching the fight. Like, thank you, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, she's like, like happiest people. memories. Bro, come on. Man. Like, for me, I watch it as like embarrassing. I'm like, man. I mean, but it was like, again, it's a pro it's, it's a progression of things. It's like when I my first my first match in professional wrestling, you know, you're so green. And she already had 10 fights on me. So right. it put in front of me. I have to work harder because I know I have I'm, you know, I have all the odds to lose, but well, you didn't even have any amateurs or smokers or anything. I mean, that was literally your MMA debut was I mean, a seen, pro fight. I and mean, we've seen and other those fighters do so. transition to yeah. someone. You know, and opponent. I never got into a real fight either. Oh, man, that, that makes me cringe right now. I don't even want to. <laughs> um, you know, it's like for whoever wants to talk shit about, oh, man, she looks like shit. Guess what? So what? I, I. Fucking dare you, dog dare you to get in a cage and get and put the training that you gotta put just to get on a cage. Straight yeah, up. That's what There's I'm saying. All the responsibility because I'm like the only not the only one. All my friends have full-time jobs, all of them. Kids, mm -hmm. responsibilities, and this is a passion. So for people to come and shit on it, and I hate when like fighters get in there and they're like, oh, that person did like shit. Well, like, they're on Twitter and then like destroy them. I'm like, you don't know nothing. You don't know nothing what you're talking about. You have to you have to have some respect on these people that we're putting our lives for your entertainment in another level, you know. Yeah. So I understand what they do and what we do on the ring is the same thing. It was like, oh my god, she sucks. Yeah, she probably sucks, but guess what? You're watching it. You're paying a ticket. You have some respect for this person. I dare you just to take a bump, you know. So now I got to ask you this though, because we've talked to Cross about this a little bit too, and Cross actually says that a lot of times in wrestling, he feels like his punches suck because. He, he has done real fights before in MMA and, and whatnot. And mm -hmm. he gets worried that he's going to throw some heat on somebody too hard. So then he pulls back too much at times. But I've noticed with you, I feel like since the MMA thing, I won't use the word stiff because I don't like that terminology, but crisp. I think that you are throwing crisper forearms. I think that you, you are coming a little harder. And I think that you honed in even some of the wrestling attacks. But is that harder when you've been throwing real ones and twos to then get in the ring and throw a wrestling punch and not knock somebody the fuck out by accident? Yeah, of course. It, it is hard. I mean, I'm so used to like, all right, let's let's do this. And I'm just like, you know, I'm like, think, and even when I look up, I look up like if I was going to be like fighting. It's so funny to be like, but no, Melissa, I gotta, you got to do it different. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's just like it's, it's it's so different. But at the same time. Uh, you can incorporate so many things. I think that's one of the reasons why people love Shayna uh, Blazer because oh, I love it. Yeah, because she knows what she's doing and she makes it look so real without hurting the other person. You know, so it's like, and then you can create so much when and when you're doing this, right? Um, but um, yeah, it is hard. But that's why I slap. That's why I don't punch. But I also think I also think it is important and like kind of what Shayna was doing and what you you're doing now and and female wrestlers in general. I think it's great because there's been a lot of criticism in the past that, oh, it's not realistic for have the to have the girls wrestle the guys. They would never beat them up in real life and whatnot. And it's like, well, no, I don't. I think that right now, like, look, I've even I've even put hands on people in the past. But I think that with your training right now, compared to me, you'd kick my ass. You know what I mean? And and I think that your actual real life skills help it translate into the ring and help people break these ideas that they have about what women's wrestling should be. It's not the, the lingerie matches of the, the past. It's not jello wrestling at some bar. This is actual athletes competing. And just like any other level of the fantasy of wrestling, to me, I don't feel like there's any reason why female wrestlers can't be booked in any fashion that you think is a good story now, because I think the athletic credibility is there. And I think that what you're doing and what other wrestlers have done to just show that they are all around athletes 
takes it to that level. Like, why would I believe that you could kick any kick somebody's ass any less than Kevin Cross? You guys have both fought people for real. You know what I mean? But I mean, I, in that aspect, I will say you have to be or the promoter have to be smart on who they book, who you, you're not. Right. You're going to you're not going to try me to put me with somebody who's 250 pounds or to 300 pounds and then me going over. You know, it's like there's still like some things that you still have to make sense. of. But I think that, yes, again, if, if you piss me off, I'm probably going to whip your ass. <laughs> but if you build the stories right, too, it's like, look, I wouldn't imagine, you know, in real life, Rey Mysterio trying to beat up Big Show either. But you know what I'm saying? Those stories still exist. And Rey Mysterio has been the champ. You know what I mean? And why why can that not go the other way? It's it's a fantasy to a certain extent. You just have to add the right level of credibility, build up the stories the right way. And the whole industry, just like with Rey Mysterio, has to invest in these characters, the female characters, and invest in them over time. Rey Mysterio had ECW, WCW, and then a run in WWE to build up to that. But people... We're to the point where they're like, this little guy could easily take any one of these six foot four top guys in WWE. And nobody questioned it after a certain point. And I think that if we build up female talent in a similar fashion where people get into these storylines, they have that credibility and the storylines back up that credibility that there's no reason that can't be the same for any person of any color or any sex to do the exact same thing that Rey Mysterio was able to do. Yes. But we'll see who who's going to do that. Well, exactly. <laughs> who, <laughs> I, I don't disagree with that. All right. So I got to ask you about this. Since the last time we talked to you, you are now an American. Yes, I am. What the heck? That was so amazing. First of all, congratulations on your citizenship. Not because this country even deserves you, but because you put your mind to something and got it done and did it exactly the way that you wanted to do it. And I love it. So Tell us a little bit about that process, why you wanted to do that, why it was important to you. Man, I want to vote. I never voted. Even when I was in Mexico, I never voted. So I want to vote. I want to be an active member of society. I want to be able, when I get older, maybe in a couple of years, to have a job in where you know, that is only for American citizens. Like I, If I'm going to be in this country, I want to be part of the difference. I just don't want to be like another person be like complaining all the time and you know, it's just like, oh, just things are the way that they are because they are the way that they are. Now, nah, like, I'm going to invest where, where I think I, I need to invest my time, you know, and my efforts, you know. And it's like, that's one of the things that stopped me from doing a bunch of stuff when I was when I was an activist, when I was living in Oakland, when I was a student in UC Berkeley, you know, because I wasn't an a, a, a American citizen. And, um, and also, I wanted to show people that you have or you can afford to do things while you do professional wrestling. And I remember when I first got my Lucha Underground um, uh, check, I told my husband, Lucha Underground is going to pay for my citizenship. Watch me. So I save all my money <laughs> and uh, I send my stuff and, um, and Lucha Underground pay for, for my, my work in Lucha Underground pay for my citizenship. And, um, and, and I, and just went for it and I did it. And the funny thing is that at the office here in San Antonio, they're big time fans of professional wrestling. So the lady, when she found out that it's a professional wrestler, first thing she asked me, do you want to be the keynote speaker for, for your ceremony? And I was like, absolutely. <laughs> she was like, I know this girl can cut a promo. That's what she said. <laughs> Bring all your to, to the, to the ceremony. So I, here it comes, you know, with my big ass championships. And then the lady, she's one of like the main uh, staff there. That, that, that show was so heavy. And I'm like trying to trying to read my stuff. And I was like, you know what? Here, take this. Take it from me. Thank you very much. You know, and everyone is like, whoa, she's doing too much. Um, so it was me and another uh, lady uh, that was from Brazil. She she owns like three different uh, Gracie Jiu Jitsu um, gyms. And she had a, a tremendous story. Um, she came from a very, um, poor background too. And then she pretty much made all her life here in, in the United States and she made all her wealth in the United States. And, uh, another interesting fact was that Chris Wolf was here when, uh, the week before my, my citizenship, uh, award. And she helped me write the, the 10 minute speech that I had to write. And I, I pretty much read the Hulk Hogan song at the end of my speech. 
<laughs> I miss Chris Wolf. I miss uh, Chris Wolf. Yeah, yeah, Chris. Chris is a favorite of all of ours for sure. I only got to see her once, and it was like the most amazing. Like, I, I was just like sat there in awe, and I went up to her afterwards, and she put me in a chokehold. But um, <laughs> yeah, biggest she, moment she of just, Leaf's life. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, she had to jump onto the table almost to like reach over the table to get to me because she's only four foot tall. <laughs> but she, she, it was just the energy, and I was just like, "This is the most amazing thing in the world." That's awesome. This is insane. One of the most amazing people. Yes, I her too. But she's so far. She lives in Norway now. Oh, in oh, the middle of nowhere. Mel, so you, you, you not only you became the first Mexican NWA champ too. Yes. That's crazy. Okay. How 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 did the NWA stuff come about? Like, what's Billy Corrigan like? Because I'm a huge Smashing Pumpkins fan, and yeah, like what just the whole NWA experience over there at NWA Power has seemed like just a rocket ship for you. And I wasn't expecting that. Like when I heard you were in NWA, I was like, oh, that's cool. They're using Mel. It was like I didn't realize they were going to strap a rocket to your back and send you to the moon. What's well, going on? Um. I was contacted by our uh, ex-vice president, uh, David Lagana, uh, pr probably a year before they were having talks of bringing NWA to, to, to YouTube. And, um, and he talked to me, he's like, we have an opportunity for you. We'd like for you to come and, and you know, try it out and, and see what you think. And then um, this is at the same time where I'm like, in between, like, should I do WWE referee? Should I sign my contract for Lucha Underground? Uh, Lucha Under for, um, Wow. But oh, this is happening, you know, so I, I mean, uh, you know, there's always like this name comes out when bad news comes, comes in is Dorian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> My triple mania opponent. So the Dorian um, hurricane happened in Florida and I was supposed to be going for a WWE tryout for referee. Because at this at this time at this time precise time which was in July August I wanted to quit wrestling I just was like done like oh, all wow. the Lucha Underground bullshit that happened you know I had I, I um, you know asked for my release and I was just kind of like all right I'm just gonna do indies and I was just getting tired of traveling so much and like not getting the recognition that I felt I deserved you know uh, which I'm not the only one who felt that way by the way and then I told one of my friends hey bro like you know like if they want anything wwe i'm just i'm, I'm willing to try anything at this point like whatever you know i'm a smart woman i can make it anywhere i go yeah yeah whatever so they call me from wwe and then i'm just kind of like oh my god like they sent me this they got i got the ticket i had everything dorian or hurricane happened then uh the vice president of NWA calls me and he's like we're ready to go on tapings are you interested and I was just like, give me a second. And then Combat is like, you got to sign the contract because we want you to fight. And I'm like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? And then my stuff keep getting rescheduled, rescheduled, and rescheduled for WWE. And I was like, you know what? This is a sign. This is a sign. I probably yeah. should have taken this. This is not for me. This is going to be for somebody else. Not for me. Not this time. And I, I send them a really nice message. Thank you very much. Maybe in the future we can work something on. And then I think then Brian gave me the, the whole speech of, you really think... You can make a difference being a referee, Melissa. I mean, think about it. Knowing you, you really want to do that for the rest of your life? I mean, I will move anywhere. We'll move the kid, we'll move the dog. But is that what you really want to do? And I was just like, nah, I really want to fight. I mean, I've been training for like four months, you know? And he's like, well, then do that, you know? And then I was like, all right. So I sent the email and I was just like, felt this like, oh man, what, what have I done? And then the next day, that's when uh, the vice president was like, um, we want to offer you a contract, full-time contract for NWA. Are you in? And I'm just like... <laughs> Yeah, I'm in, but you know, I am going to fight too. So you guys have to take that. And just like, absolutely, you can do, you can do both at the same time. And I was like, I'm in. Where do I sign? And that's how I signed up for NWA. That's crazy. So, are, is NWA doing any tapings right now? What are you doing with nope. them now? We are in a transitional period right now. Um, Billy Corgan, who is uh, an excellent human being and I have nothing but good things to say about him. I've been able to meet him in a different level than a lot of people have. And, um, he's so smart and so kind and so in touch with, with, with his feelings, with, with, you know, with his perception, his perception of wrestling is completely different than any other, any other person because he, he doesn't come from a wrestling background, right. you know? So, um, 
that's why I understand him because in, in his field of music, he's been one of the most successful musicians in the history. He had nothing. He came from nothing, you know, and he's been able to make millions and millions of dollars with his band by himself. And he continues to create music and he continues to do his art. And um, I learned so much from him in terms of like, you know, what the, when you have a vision that you, you shouldn't be sacrificing your vision uh, unless it's like strictly necessary, you know, because right. I think what's going to take us to the next level. That's what's going to take the NWA to a level that has never been there before. And I'm not talking about like the 1960s, 1970s, 1980s. I'm talking about the new NWA needs to evolve because as you guys know, um, we have a terrible history, you know, treating certain people a certain way, you know? And I think um, he's all about changing that mindset and being open for, for us to make a real change in within within the, the NWA. And that's um, one of the things I really admire of, of, of him. That's awesome. And and I, I am so happy to see you wearing that strap. Super proud of you. Yeah. It's amazing. And And you need more straps in your life in general, more belts, bring them all. You did get one belt though in Lucha Underground. You got a trios title. Oh, well, the trios, <laughs> the trios champ, <jam>, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> and I have another. I'm the first uh, international wrestler to earn the international princess championship at Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling. I'm That's right, it. Josie, bro. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I'm planning to defend it as soon as I can wrestle. By the way. Yeah, I think I would imagine that traveling over there to uh, defend it right now would be a little bit tricky. Well, yeah, that was, you know, man, I was supposed to go there twice this year yeah. and this it, COVID just like destroyed my plans uh, about wrestling. But that's OK, whatever. But you know what? For me, it's like, honestly, it's not about the straps. Like I've seen a lot of people are like, oh, my God, this woman has like, you know, created a difference because she did this. She did that. She became the first um, uh, female to get a uh, male strap, whatever. It's not about that. It's not about what championship you held. It's, what do you do outside of the ring to really make a, a, a difference for the women that are behind you? You know, that, that, right. and I'm not talking about, you know, just saying things on, in, on the internet It's like really putting the work mm -hmm. and really trying to change the things, not just because you're going to gain something for yourself, but it's because you're going to help all the other girls that are behind you to be in, uh, to probably be in the same spot that you are. I know we all want to be there. We all want to be on the top. But sometimes you have to think about what's going to be best for everybody. And it's, that's what I'm like, it, going back to what we we're talking earlier is like um, for me, when they put this championship and I started learning more and more about the history of this championship, it is so important that we change the whole like, oh, well, the fable is Mula had for 50 years. And right. we, some of the behaviors that she display, you know, mm. they weren't the best for other females. You know? And that's what we're trying to change is like, we're trying to change it for the better, you know, not every woman that are in power are going to take um, advantages of other women because they, they want to get in that position. Like that's not me. That's not me as a champion. On the contrary, I want to show that a real champion has to do things for the community, for your people, for other women, you know, for the groups of people, if you can. And if that's from like the bottom of your heart, you right. know, but, but you know, this, that's me. That's, that's, I'm, I'm a social worker. I'm continue to <laughs> Mm -hmm. right. But that, but this is part. This is totally what I was talking about before. Is like, okay, it's one thing to clear out the bad, but it has to be, you know, a new system is has to be put into place, and we need the people who are coming up in the business and who have a name in the business, like yourself, now to to give us the ideas and the fundamentals of what the business should be about and what maybe it should have always been about. You know, it, it's it's not an easy process. It's a tricky thing to figure out and navigate, but you're doing the hard work. No, and it's not. And it's not because we don't I don't have the millions of dollars that big companies have to, like, you know, promote that I'm helping other people. I don't want that. Like there was an article written. I, I don't remember by who, but it's talking about when I first was crowned as, uh, as the NWA champion and they um Compare me to Lacey, Lacey, Lacey Ryan. Is she from uh, WWE? The one that is like veteran. Lacey, Lacey, Evans. Evans. Lacey, Lacey Evans. And they're like, yeah, she's going and doing all this volunteer work with like NW, I mean, with, with WWE. But you see Thunder Rosa, you know, going to like volunteer work in the Salvation Army without having the millions of dollars to back up and promotional mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, you're going without the cameras. Community. 
you know, you can still make a difference without having all these cameras and all these things. Is that's what you really want to do, you know, with a strap or without a strap. And then you can still do um, like there's a um, I just talked about it on, on Thursday. Uh, one of my friends, Amanda, she's creating a, a wrestling coalition to create new um, rules and, and establish new things for HR for people not to be harassed. You know, yeah. and she's talked out of her own time and her own money to HR people, attorneys, and she's trying to develop this so we can implement it in different parts of the United States by calling out a stronger veteran women or men who are interested to talking to schools, where she, whereas all the, the new wrestlers are going to come out and talk about this thing so we don't have these issues like we used to have before. So that's the kind of change that I'm interested in. The one that we can actually, like you were saying, implementing something different and yes, we probably, some people are not going to like it, but some things need to change. You know, not everybody's going to be on board, but it's not about who's going to, who's not going to be on board. It's we're talking about who, all of those who are ready to make a, a change and to do something different for the business. And look, I, I'm not afraid to say it. I know a lot of people are, are a little bummed about wrestling right now, um, that the, the predatory actions, the bullying, um, some of the, the old boys mentality that needs to change, some of the, the racism in the booking and, you know, discrimination against people, the sexism in the business. I am not afraid to say flat out as a fan that it needs to change. But at the same time, it does not make me hate wrestling because there are lots of great people out there doing great stuff. I'm not going to punish the people that are still doing it that are there just because I'm bummed out that a couple of my favorites got outed for the nonsense that they did. That's just the way this business is. Sometimes, you you know, people that you like in the ring are playing a character just because I like Luke Skywalker in Star Wars doesn't necessarily mean I like what Mark Hamill does in his personal life. It's just that that's the way it goes. And, you know, I, I hope that all fans are hearing what you're saying that are that have faith that a change is coming, that big things are happening across wrestling, that there are people out there like Thunder Rosa that are trying to take care of their piece of it and try to add positivity to it. And don't get totally turned off by wrestling because of the fact that there's been a system of some bad things that have happened in the past. It can change for the better. And it has been. You know, and, and if, if that's the case, sorry, guys, we we uh, expose the business. Yeah. So we talk about the things that they told us not to talk about because it was taboo, because it was bad, because, you know, people were going to be out of jobs. Of course, people are going to be out of jobs. But at the same time, it's like for some folks who you know, experience real harassment, stalking, um, being blackballed, like, you know, um, all kinds of stuff like that's not fair. You know, so some of them have worked so hard just to get one opportunity. And then that person don't like you because you told them to stop or no or something. And then, you know, and then you just don't have anything. And then all you work for what, you know, you have to like, you know, it's just, it's so, it's so much. And, and, and it's, it's right now is like, it's so emotionally charged from both sides, you know? And, um, you know, you just have to listen. You just have to educate yourself and re-educate others. And that's the only thing we can do. Otherwise, things are not going to change. And we're going to continue to have these issues in the future, in the very near future. As soon as we start running shows again, everybody's going to be running like we always have run. Only one female match, which is the ladies match with a five minute time limit, you know, <laughs> Fuck your five minute time limit. Let me tell you something. I can main event your show and I can bring probably more people than the people that you book for your main event, you know, straight up. And I've straight done, up. It. I've done it here in Texas and I've done it in LA when I was a nobody. I went out, passed out flyers, drove 10 hours from Oakland to Los Angeles, stayed there for five days to pass out flyers and tell people to come to the show. That's what I did because I wanted to make sure that people know I'm worth a fucking penny when they told me I wasn't worth shit. You so, are. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> and for these other ladies to understand that we have to respect our business and we have to respect professional wrestling this is what we do this happened also in when you're fighting professional like if you don't sell tickets they're not gonna pay you what you're asking for straight yeah. up they don't give a shit and they tell you straight in your face you're gonna be in that cage beating somebody's ass and probably getting your ass beat too if you didn't train hard enough and then you're going to be making enough money to feed your family if that's the only thing you're doing. 
So you got to put the effort to sell those tickets and also to tell the people, this is what I deserve because right. I earned, you know? So you got to like, know your worth. You have to know your value for yes. sure. And, and it's and, hard when you're coming up to know what your value is. And you do have to put in a little bit of time and pay some dues. But at the same time, as you start to go up in any business, once you know your value, you have to work hard to maintain your value, show people that what your value is, but you also have to stand up for it. Tell them like, hey, my value is this. I can do this and this and this. And then you have to come through with that. And you've absolutely done that. You are the role model for like saying what your worth is and then going out and proving what your worth is. Worked so hard. And I'm just not telling you, I didn't put, uh, you know, a dollar sign behind my name. Because my mom was a wrestler before me. My dad was a, a wrestler, a, a famous wrestler, or my brother was a wrestler. No, it's because I work my ass off, my ass off, because I'm a fucking Mexican woman in an American market. You know, and I, I don't even get the respect in my own country. What tells you right there is that I got to work harder than absolutely everybody else to put a value on my name. And if you're not going to listen to me because, you know, I'm being outspoken or you don't going to like what I have to say, then OK, fine. You know, I can do something else and make more money. You know, this is like if that's the case. But I love professional wrestling so much and I spend so much time and I sacrifice so much that I'm not willing to give it up yet. And if this is me working a little bit harder to make extra money for this show, fine, I'm going to do that, you know, because this is working on my personal goals, which is empowering other people to speak up, to be able to speak up and feel comfortable speaking up, you know, for what the right thing is. For what the That's right thing is. Yes. I just do like fucking create chaos. I'm talking about for the right thing. I don't when I when I talk to you, Justin, and I've said you things things to you in, in, in a personal level, I don't I don't lie to you. You know, I tell you the truth. Absolutely. And every promoter that I work, I don't fucking spread rumors just for somebody to not have a job. If I know somebody is not a good person, I will let them know that person is not a good person. Because there's nothing worse than getting involved with people that are, they say they're good people, but they have other intentions. And that is, and you are not their best intention. It's to fuck you over at the end. And there's been so many people in the entertainment business. Now, I'm not only talking about in the professional wrestling business and the entertainment business that do that, that they see any opportunity to fuck you over so they can get where they need to get. Oh, um, they love to step over bodies. It, like is, it, is, wolves. it is so very, very common in entertainment, as uh, all of us can really tell you, you know, dealing with it that uh, at a lot of levels, they will just step over your dead body because that's what benefits them for, for their climbing the ladder or, or they'll dodge shit rolling downhill and let it hit you right in the face when you have no business taking any of it. Cause it was completely them. It's just, it's, it, it is part of the game. And so that being said, I do want to ask you, this is the last thing I would really wanted to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about the, the gray area of the Thunder Rosa career here, the end of the Lucha underground era, getting out of the contract, going over to wow, being, Cobra Moon when you got there, because I know you had to be disappointed that they still wanted you in the hood, but then that not even sticking and then turning into Serpentine. Like, what what went on in this whole period, Mel? That was so weird. Bro, I'm a worker, man. <laughs> I can tell you on that one. Um, so, when I asked to be released of Lucha Underground, I was asked by a group of people, and they were like, oh, you don't have to pay anything. I'm like, I'm in. Where do I sign? <laughs> Like, I want to be free, you know? Free free is free, especially if it gets you free. <laughs> yeah. Like, brother, I'm in this thing, you know? And um, so I signed and then everything. I had a conversation with somebody uh, from the company and they were like, so what is it you want? And I straight up said, I don't want any problems. You know, I have not been able to get any extra work with uh, the sister, the sister company in Mexico, because like, I don't think they see my worth. And you know what? I'm not, I'm not here to like, continue to like push it and push it and push it and just like you know just get a little bit like i know who i am i know i've been all over the world i worked on my own you know and if you guys don't give it to me i want i want to make this opportunity for myself but i need my freedom okay right. fine. I, I respect that because you know? i'm not a person of like you know i'm not a person of conflict i don't and like I, conflict. I don't think people understand that either because i this is one of the interesting things i've always thought about your story is that you actually were having kind of the opposite issue that everyone else was having is you know a lot of these the, the luchadors and luchadoras were trying to come into the States and wanted to be released because of that. But part of your problem was the fact that Lucha Libre wasn't really accepting you 
And they were looking at you more as like an American indie wrestler. So you had pretty much the exact opposite problem. These guys were all trying to get into the American indies. And you were like, well, if I'm not going to break into Mexico, then just let me go back to being the indie performer I was before. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a yeah. very strange situation that you were in. Yeah, because I want our TV, you know, and even if it was like um, a paper appearance, I didn't care. Like, I just wanted a, my name to be out there, you know, because I was so limited. And I thought that Cobra Moon and this platform was going to like skyrocket my career in a way, in a professional level, it did. But in 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 a, in a wrestling level, people still don't know that I was Cobra Moon. So I'm just like, man, I spent four years of my career thinking that this was going to help and it didn't really help, you know. So whatever. I, I asked for my release. They were kind enough to give my release, you know. And then from there on, I was like, yeah, I'm free. So at that time, because they were with Axis, and I think um, I had to ask permission to to be in the show. And they say, yeah, absolutely, you can be in the show. So I was uh, as Cobra Moon, though. Just, I was going to do another another character. But then they're like, no, 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 we don't want you. We are going to give the mask to somebody else. And I designed the mask, like the gear, everything. <laughs> and everybody else. And I was just like, fuck, man. OK, whatever. So I do Cobra Moon. I re- they only gave me like three matches, which I was pissed. That's another thing. Don't even get me started. I love, you know, I love my girls from WoW. They're, some of them are amazing talent. Some of them are just continue to learn. They have a, you have a great, great, great um attitude towards professional wrestling because a lot of them they don't come from a professional wrestling background they're like dancers they're models you know and they're super sweet but man i was struggling i was like man i'm like one of your most like seasoned talent i can work american i can work lucha style and then you give me three matches because you didn't have a storyline for me i was like there you go that's the respect that i get you know that's what like every time bro every time is the same thing just like slap in the face like Oh, you're good, but you're not good enough because we have somebody else better than you, you know? Or yeah, have- I mean, especially that that first season there, it did seem like you were a bit of an afterthought. But then, so why did it go from Cobra Moon to, to Serpentine? Was that after you were let go from the contract and they still wanted oh. to keep the same gimmick or oh. what? It was strange. This is the same thing, you know, like around the same time we were supposed to do the second the second season. And then I went and talked to David and I was like, hey, man, you know what? I'm getting out of my contract. I, I don't want to do nothing to do with Lucha Underground or Cobra Moon, but per se. But my husband and I, we think we should, since you already introduced us like a snake kind of thing, get a cousin, you know? I mean, because they're not, they're, they don't want me to want their own character. They want to sell merchandise. I get it. They, he wants to sell his own merchandise. He doesn't want right. to pay me. They have my stuff tried, trademark, you know? So they created Serpentine. And it was like, I don't know that McLean could have paid you even if he wanted to. He didn't have that kind of loot. Then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we did Serpentine and um and uh, I dude, I came on that. At, uh, that was like uh, September last year. I came in and I was like, oh, man, I wish they only give me two matches so I can just chill. You know, I just hang out with the girls, watch, you know, watch all these matches. It's going to be fantastic. I come in and like you have seven matches. And I'm like, because oh. <laughs> <laughs> you i'm like fuck i have seven matches and then i had i think i was coming from japan i just came like i was fresh from japan too i think so uh, and then i had all my you know mma stuff going on so i was just like so stressed out i was having i remember when time. when we when we saw you the first thing you said was i am so tired bro <laughs> <laughs> i've done so many matches and then you were like well yeah which ones have you guys been here for what have you seen and we had seen a few of them and it was just like you were just like, okay, I'm cool. I think I'm done. I think I got one more match this week and then I'm out. <laughs> yeah, it was it was rough, but um in in that season, man. Ugh. Well, That's- you know, honestly, it's kind of crazy because <laughs> I, I thought the same thing about the Cobra Moon thing too. I was like, okay, this is like this is gonna be the thing. But honest to goodness, the Thunder Rosa name is way bigger now than the Cobra Moon name ever was. You're the NWA champ. You 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 have gone around the world. You're starting your own all female promotion, Mission Pro. You've seriously just killed it. You never stopped. You never let any of these things hold you back, hold you down, keep you from doing everything. You got another fight. Do we know when the fight is coming up? No, I mean I was supposed to fight in September 11. It was going to be an all female card in 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 a, in a closed studio. Wow. But I heard my knee a month ago. 
So I have not been able to train 100, percent you know. And um, and I told my coach, you know, coach, I wanna on my next fight, I really wanna feel ready. And I'm I'm talking about from the moment I start my fight camp to the moment it it, it, it ends, you know, because this is all my work is gonna be um, scheduled around my fight, and that's what's gonna be for the future too. Like I'm saying a lot, a lot of notes, so a lot of bookings. Because I want to make sure that first I get I get paid what I deserve as a NWA champion, and two that is worth my time because this is like sometimes I have to take two days off from training, which will affect me in the future in the in in, in the octagon, you know. So it's like I have to be very mindful of what I do outside uh, outside of uh, of MMA. But um, I mean the the plan is to fight this year. Right. Okay. This is probably a good time for it too. I mean, you can get healed up. You got the time now, and hopefully, get some training in before your schedule gets super busy at the beginning of the next year, like I feel it's gonna be. No, I've been training the whole entire time. I, I just do stand up right now, and like I practice my entrances and stuff like that. My my entrance for takedowns. Yeah, but I'm not doing jujitsu right now. But everything else I'm doing, I have not stopped. I mean, I have Brian who'll be like, "Are you gonna go to the gym today? Why you're not going? It's not hurting. What are you doing? You know." No excuses. And this little mofo, he lost 30 pounds. That's how, you know, motivated he is to, you know, to like, to be part of, of the journey together. You know, he, he he's getting his, his sexy bod. <laughs> you know, but it's like, we're doing this killing it. Yeah, we're, we're, we're doing it as a family. So it's, it always been that way. So, um, yeah, well, man. when you do those entrances, get somebody to show you how to pummel under, do a barrel roll with an inside leg trip. It works great. People oh, never expect it's coming because they're all too busy up here thinking you're going to Muay Thai clinch them. But then if you barrel roll them with an inside leg trip at the same time. I saw that on Instagram yesterday and I was like, oh my God, it's so cool. It is. <laughs> it, and don't get me wrong. People are going to catch on to it soon. But I've been seeing a lot of people like pulling it off and people just don't expect it. Because if you step out to the right, you can block it pretty easy. But nobody does. Yeah, they're worried. Yeah, like I said, we're always worried about this, 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 this you know? Yeah. You, you forget about the rest. Well, thank you so much for joining us. So where, where can people find you? Like you've got the YouTube channel. That's that's fire, by the way. If you're not watching Mel's vids on YouTube, you are messing up real bad. She got interviews on there. She got personal stuff, wrestling stuff, all sorts of stuff. guests. Tell them that if you guys know um, a craft beer company that would like to sell me beer, that wants me to do a video on 100. I love crafted beer. Like I love it. And that does what I like. My dirty little secret I've been doing lately. One, one will know. One yeah. Zabita, one will know. One. Yeah. yeah. If you can't understand the Meef Loaf accent, Juan Zapata. <laughs> oh, no, no. He's like, he's one of her biggest fans in San Antonio. Yeah. Let them to send me the stuff. But yeah, you can find me on thunderosa.net. You can purchase all my merchandise there and see my calendar of events of where I'll be wrestling. And then uh, you can also find me on uh, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Thunderosa22 and on YouTube, which I have a live feed later at 5 o'clock Central Time. Well, that'll have been two days before this airs, but yeah. go and watch the live feed anyway, guys. Go watch yeah. the, the tape. Every Saturday. Um, every Saturday you do that? I try to do it every Saturday right now but with because I'm not working, so I'll just do it Saturdays and, you know, there's not no wrestling. But when I wrestle, I usually change it. And my videos come once a week, either on a Tuesday or on a Thursday, around 8 p.m. Like, I just be, haven't been able to edit another video because I've been so busy working on this. And I, hopefully by this week, we'll be done with my business plan, with our, our two-year vision of the show, booking all our show, and announcing where they can get the tickets, you know, and everything. But we are so excited. Thank you for giving me all this time, guys. I miss you so much. You guys have no... Love it. We all miss you. And give our best to Robin, too. I'm really excited that she's coming in to work with you on this one. And she's she's excited. We're giving her a couple of challenges. So we're we're a little picky on some things. But um Good. But it's 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 all good, man. It's it's an all learning experience. I you know, like with, with, with MMA, like I don't I don't wanna live my life regret that I didn't try and I attempt or I didn't do them. And then say, man, I wish I would have done that. Like, I want to be 50 years old and say, I tried and I did everything I wanted to do before I retired and be a boring person, which I think I won't be, honestly. I'll be doing <laughs> well, that's why you are the matter, matter. You are the boss chick for real now. Keep it going. Yes. And just guys, 
the most important part from everything is just keep supporting those who you know are making a difference. I know there's that's like my 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 biggest thing when um when I see certain people doing certain stuff or like getting all this press and I know I know in the bottom of my heart the real what the real deal is and I'm just like I'm not gonna say anything because you know life life will change things but we're going the right we're running in the, in the right path right now guys that's all I have love to say. it <laughs> thank you so you much. Both. Best to no. best to be back there too, and and Drago snoring in the background. Snoring <laughs> so hard, I have my anxiety vest, so that like chills him out. Like, where I am, like this little. Get him some little doggy CBD or melatonin or something. Get get that. Get him chill out. <laughs> He's taking that. Like he is taking that. Like, um, see you guys. <laughs> I'm a social worker. Everywhere I go, I we got this kid, and then man, this he's a lot of work. We're gonna start training him too. We want him to have a, a better life. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for stopping by. Thunder Rosa, appreciate you. Champ, champ, double champ, trios champ, V champ. <laughs> 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 thank you so much. And good luck with everything for Mission Pro 2. And if you need anything from us, you let us know. When you guys are doing a show, if you want to come on, promote, drop anything, you always welcome. Anytime. Hey, we don't need luck. We just need you guys to support it and promote it. Okay. Done. Absolutely. We need all the tick. All right. Good day. Cheers. Take care. Bye. Lucha-masks.com, in partnership with Mass Republic, give you personal protective masks to keep you Lucha strong in the fight versus COVID-19. With world-class luchadors Blue Demon Jr., the Lucha Brothers, L.A. Park, Ultimo Dragon, Kane Velasquez, Conan, and so much more. Head to lucha-masks.com and you too can become a masked warrior. Lucha-masks.com, powered by Pro Wrestling Revolution. Bones and Bruises isn't getting screwed over, are they? They're still going to be around, right? I mean, they haven't had a show in a long, long time. But they're going to be like the new bar wrestling He's going to be right? so bumped, he came back all excited. You're wearing the same mask he spent all that time to put on. I mean, the, the, the thing with Bumps and Bruises is that they don't run regularly. So right. I don't know if they can overtake bar, but they had some of the same people from bar. Who oh no, Jim! <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I was wearing it first, me. That's amazing. Aaron, please include that in the show. You got Jim. Jim has the best one though. Jim has the black and gold, which is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, welcome back. Um, yes, yeah, so at lucha-mask.com, you can get a mask, but look at these guys. Look at the Bandito brothers up here. What's going on, guys? This is amazing. So <laughs> me, Byron, and Casey just got our, our lucha-mask.com uh, orders in, and we were going to talk about them. But, so we told these guys, oh, throw on, throw on some masks real quick, and they both went away, and they came back looking like this. It was amazing. Yeah. It's like they showed up in the same dress at a party. Which has also happened. Okay, so I told Kleinrock that there was no way in hell I was going to put this mask on and not tell people what I really thought about it. And there's a reason why I ordered Taurus. Because you're awesome? Furry. Sexual. Because, well, because Taurus is furry. awesome. But what did you get, Byron? I have the uh, Pentagon, Penta El Cerro Miedo Red Dragon mask because Pentagon fucks and it's been really lonely during this quarantine. Okie dokie. Let's go to Casey. Casey, which uh, one did you get there? I got Hayabusa, the Japanese legend. Rest I think Jim's peace. got one of those too somewhere, right? I mean, it, has, it might be arriving in the mail today, so hopefully I get it. Yeah. And no, apparently, apparently when I tweeted it, everyone thought I was Glacier, and his mask is very different. Very oh different. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. Um, and, and me, Flo, you have one coming to you, too, but it's all the way in England, so it's going to take, like, I don't know, four months since you guys have now oh, said the U.S. Hey, no, 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 no. Please tell me it's the Disco Inferno one. Please. I got the, uh, what do you call it? I got my Phantasma mask, like, maybe a day or two after the guys in America. Oh, sweet. So, and I've yeah. also ordered a, a Ray Phoenix one, I think. that. Uh, oh, that's going to be really good. I have, uh, I, have, one, Dark I, have one the, I have one of the Masquerita ones coming. Oh, that's yeah, a good one. But so I, I ordered Taurus specifically for a reason. I'm going to actually take it off and show it to you guys a little bit because it's a... Uh... Ah! 
Oh, back on. There we go. It's a, it's kind of a crazy mask because it's like, it's latex. It's like a regular, you know, Halloween type mask or something, but then super professionally done. And then it's got this um, lining in here. Yeah. So, and and here's the thing: we we're never going to endorse a product without saying what we actually think about it. So I'm going to tell you the the reason why I ordered this is because I said to myself, "Dang, if there's a mask." that they're selling right now at Lucha Mask, God, lucha-mask.com that is crazy and maybe impractical, it's got to be this one. So I want to find the one that most likely has the most stuff wrong with it. And I got to tell you, it is surprising. And the Drago one was the other one. It is surprising how well you can actually breathe in this. Yeah. This I will say, cool. however, though, that I feel like the elastics were made for somebody with maybe byron size head because the bottom elastic is not tight on me. I have to, oh, oh, I no, have to tie Justin, it off. Justin, you got the thong version. Oh. That's so not the mask. I, that's that's for the that's for the balls. That one's yeah. This one, yeah, that's that supposed to go up your ass. Oh, that's, that's really cute. comfortable. Oh my god. Ball in the sheets. Yeah. A ball in the sheets. I like how you put it on sitting down. Oh. No, he stands up. No, I'm just, I'm just, I have long arms. I can reach down and slide it up, right? You know, I'm mean, it's not like I was wearing pants to begin with. Jesus, I got to say me and Byron, ours are kind of similar in that uh, I find it very great to breathe in this. Right, Byron? You good, too? It's a, yeah. Yeah. Mine's really great to breathe in. I've worn it out a bunch of times. I and it has the lining on the other side. Uh, for those of you flip yours around, Byron, show them the lining. Oh, uh, well, it's just it's dark. Does it have the pockets or is it just uh, lined and they wash it? Um, uh, it's just lined and you wash it. OK. I don't yeah. know if this one is going to be washable, but, to tell you the truth. Like, you I gotta, might just <laughs> clean it out or something, but it, it's the lining doesn't really come out, and it is, I don't know, maybe it could go. You got to be careful when you wash them. Like, well, now, I, I will say that when I opened this one, it smelled uh, a little chemically. I let it air out before I put it on. I Lysoled it pretty good, but I mean, it's molded latex, so it's yeah. It's like and actually we have. It smells like a, a costume shop. Is there's what it smells a reason. Like. There's a reason it smells like that, Byron. This is where you you need to insert the video of me wearing Justin's mask over my dick before we send it to him, Byron. And insert that right here, please. Yeah, please don't don't do that. <laughs> Anyway, so, so don't take that Byron, insert that right here, please, quote, and use it for any other kind of purpose that you may have. That is not consent. These masks uh, are great. They're at Lucha Dash masks. Are come. I want to thank Kevin. Yes. For, for hooking us up. Um, Absolutely beautiful. Too. I, I, can you see how sparkly this is, dude? Like, this is like. Oh, they're great, they're great um, collectors item, I think. Yeah, One, not not even I shilling. You, I, I would say that you. for the thirty five the thirty five bucks for for this as a Taurus item, like, look, you're not going to get a full Taurus mask for thirty five. Honestly, where are you going to get Taurus anything though? Because the dude barely has any merch. Like that's, that's truth official. This is the only official Hayabusa mask ever, ever. She get an autograph. Yeah, really. Oh. 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 Buy rubber, rubber Log yourself it. out. Log yourself out. No, it's just it's a it's a fun product. It's like, look, mm -hmm. um, sadly, if you're looking at the numbers these days, it looks like we're going to be wearing masks for quite a while. Um, it, well, if if that is your political belief to wear a mask, but for those uh, who are lucha libre fans, most of them believe in masks. And uh, uh, do an exclusive, a, Justin. Can we? Do it's a, a fun it's call. Weird. If you don't believe in masks to stop listening to our show. Can we make that a statement? Austin Aries, you want everyone football. to listen to yeah. our show. Low key and Austin Aries are not listeners of this show, so fuck them. Uh, yeah, we I will. I will say this about, about this show for what every if our numbers go down by two. <laughs> the, the opinions, the opinions of the hosts on this show do not necessarily reflect the entire show. But I will never stop any body on this show from having their opinion. If you want to say fuck Austin Aries, you're absolutely Apart entitled. from Byron, though. Let's not let Byron have an opinion. Yeah, that whole uh, mm, me yeah, turn around. should be 12 thing that he talks about. We gotta get that out of there. Yeah, yeah. we definitely do. I agree. So, do you want to know exclusive about these masks as well? Sure. Give them to me. I, I, can't, I, I'll, I'll, can I can I say? Can I say? There's gonna be a really, we, have, we are taping. We can edit it out there if is you say a something really, stupid. There's a really, really nice one coming soon that I helped create oh it's the one with the mmm show ball sack 
Yeah. No, no, no. No, no. It's got a, it's clearly a pair of purple panties. And it's no, 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 it's not phantasm related. What? What? All I'll say is it's Phoenix related. Hmm. And mm. you might be able to see it over my shoulder. The giant dude's dick? No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah is, it, is it a big black package over your mouth? Well, there's, there's a mask that I have that you all always want. Is it oh, the, I think um, I know which one. Venom? Ooh. Hey, we can't, Venom? Hey. So basically you're telling me all I right. fucked up by don't, getting don't the Dark say, Phoenix one now. Don't and... say it's Venom or Dark Phoenix when we have a Marvel employee on yeah, the show. Yeah, Jesus oh, Christ. No, he Dark Phoenix. Phoenix. Dark okay. Phoenix. Dark Phoenix is a legit name written down with an F, so... <laughs> Shove that up with lawyers. Dark at. Phoenix, not, not yours, Jim. But not you know, Dark Phoenix <laughs> sparkles. Which, by the way, say, our legal department is also ha- has marks in it. So, yeah. oh, good, good, good. That's come the, on, yeah. Dark Ph- Phoenix is back under the Marvel umbrella now, too. By the way, buddy, it's back. They got X Men back. Hey, who who, who made back. the Phantom? Yeah, that is uh, King King Syndicate uh, owns. Oh, no, okay, yes. They also Jim, own Andrake get Marvel movie. to buy them out and put them into bus- out of business. Hey, dude. Okay, Marvel, so Marvel just got Predator, so shit's about to get real. Oh. Casey, okay, so you've got your Hayabusa mask. You, you still have hairy balls, though. Is Kevin Kleinrock still on the wall of shame? And if so, why? The balls? Imagine. Imagine. That's all I'm saying. What? So you're keeping Kevin Kleinrock on there even even after the Hayabusa mask, he's still on there because your balls are hairy? Yeah, and also like I feel wow. like it said July was when those uh boss fight studios, Legends of Lucha Libre series yeah. figures were still the fuck is my the fuck are my figures? It's July third as we're recording this. You know, I paid for them already. They're not even freebies that I want. I just want I paid my eighty pound people. delivery. Ooh. Ooh. I want my Fuck. fucking luchadors, Legends of Lucha. Yeah, I'm sending all my figures to Casey from now on. God damn it, Kev. Yeah. I'm sorry if you're listening to this, bro. I tried to get you off the hook, but man, Kevin Kleinrock is still on the wall of shame. But I'll tell you who's above him on the wall of shame. Still Jojo Feeney. I don't, I, nah, dude. You know what? He got us mentioned on the show by fucking us over. So I love that guy. Uh, yeah, I think that was, I think that was, that was uh, Disco's doing. And, and Disco and Kevin pushed that agenda. Hmm. You know, because Disco knows that we would put him over and we would give him two compliments uh, before I'll, we I'll, ask him a question. Yeah, honestly. We'll, call, we'll say it was uh, Conan because he messaged me like, literally days before going on the show. So, Oh, Conan, but did Conan did say too. that he would follow you if you followed him? Was that the No, one? no, no. He just asked me if I watched the show, even though my previous messages from him were if I watched the show. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. I don't know if uh, this Conan might be running his social media from Iran. Let's just say uh, that. I think he oh, runs good. a lot of his stuff. Confirmed. From Iran. Dude, you know how much dumb shit people have to be sending him for him doing that promotion that he'll follow people back. I would never do that. I never would do that. He is. He's a good, brave man for doing that. Wait, where's Meatloaf going when I need to ask about the next person on the wall of shame, which is well, I, wrestling, all pedos, all he's pedos, gotta back, all He's got to put back his mask. Bullies. I yeah, wanna, he has to put his mask Jesus back. Jesus Christ, though, what are you doing? I want to vote for Kevin off of the wall of shame, and then uh, I want to vote again for JoJo on the wall of shame, if you're asking all of us, while Meef is doing whatever he's doing. He's wandering around like his cat. All right, so Meef missed his opportunity to speak on Brit wrestling, but, all pedos, predos, perverts, and bullies no, in wrestling. It's still going. He, but he fully, that means he fully supports British pedophilia. They're, They're still on the wall. Horrible. A, lot, a, lot, a lot of them have been um, fired now. There's still a few investigations going on. But in whole, the companies degree, are, so. whole companies are dead now, yeah? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And some mm-hmm. who are tr- sure. still I, trying to go ahead uh, kind of now being called out by other companies and we just don't think they'll ever be able to come back. I don't think so. I mean, no. oh, it's bad, but you know, hopefully it means that the people that do come through and rebuild, build a better place for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know All right. I mean? I'll, t- yeah. I'll tell you who is still on the list. Our friends, Jeffrey Briggs and JT Wilcoxon, vice president of WZW and Lucha underground wrestling. I don't know who those guys are. No one knows who those guys are. Oh, Casey. And they never will. 
They're the guys that filed the fucking trademark for Lucha Underground Wrestling. They added a word to Lucha Underground, filed a trademark, and think that they, and have told us I mean, through, via email that they're going to buy the library and rights for the other portions of Lucha Underground and bring right. back all of our favorites that are still available. Yeah, what I make an announcement? I've just bought the rights to World Wrestling Entertainment Wrestling. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm going to buy the rights to World Wildlife Fund and then just bring back the old WWF. How about that? Yeah, hey, as as long as Pantar is involved, you got my money. But with our favorite panda. I agree with you, Meef, with our favorite panda. Oh, no. All right, we added oh. we added Tessa Blanchard last week, who couldn't even yeah. phone it in and got herself fired. I have a theory. Um, is she still on the list? I have is a theory. The what? Uh, I think um, I, I think that she probably kind of figured she could get her contract. So why would she do anything to make her impact contract? So I mean, there's a little bit, but I get I get what you're saying. She might, yeah. she might be working for a much better, bigger employer within a few months. Okay, look, yeah, yeah and I, I get her not showing up to drop the belt. She only had three days left on her contract anyway. But the fact that they asked her to phone in some stuff, even if you're Fire. walking out on your contract, just phone it in. Like, do cut a promo, cut it, go go into business for yourself, but still send the promo, send something. Hold on, does she? Uh, Where's she gonna go? WWE don't want her. They got rid of her already. And AEW, uh, they ain't gonna have her. Do they do? Does she do cameos by any chance? Is the WWE, would, uh, WWE, I think, is rumored to have interest in her. It would have been hilarious if Impact bought a cameo of her saying what they wanted. That would have been hilarious. They're not, they're no, not she was, outside the box enough, is what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she did a photo shoot, some sort of thing with Selena De La Renta during that whole time. I saw yeah. Selena because she posts a lot and hustles a lot. She's like, that could order. have been old though. That could have been much older because yeah. Yeah, that's like trapped down and around to each other. But she has, but she asks, she has fans like pay money to give suggestions or directions or requests. That's called a custom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wasn't the, wasn't the one about, uh, <laughs> not, a, not a fetish video as Thunder Rosa has explained to us. That's, that's a different thing. It's not a fetish video. It's a custom. They cost more. Customs cost more. <laughs> No, the fetish. Oh, I bet. Uh, I see. You would know these things, me. You're the expert. You're the expert. I don't know about these OnlyFans accounts and these custom videos and fetish videos or whatever it is that you're into. You tell me what you guys do with purple uh, panties, and I'll just follow your lead. Me, if you want them to wear something, do you still just mail it to them, or because of the COVID thing, do you give them the money for them to buy the outfits themselves? Okay, game. so I'm going to ask if we should add well, this next person to the wall of shame before Byron gets himself added to this thing. Yeah. I'm should, asking what Meek does. Yeah, no. Should we add David Lagana, former now Ooh. NWA vice president and main booker? Okay. Um, we just heard Thunder Rosa talking a little bit about NWA, and, and she said, um, and I didn't want to put her on the spot about this, which is why we did not talk with her about this last week. And it was honestly, I think it was happening the day. Yeah, it was. Literally. It was literally happening at the time when we interviewed her. And it's not, I don't want her to comment on it. This is a guy that that gave her a shot and kind of put her on. But she's also friends with Liz Savage. Um, so I didn't want to put Mel in that mix at all. And nor should she have to be. No one, no one should have to be put in an uncomfortable position with any of these I, things. But. I, Liz Savage uh, is is someone that I I do personally know. She's never been anything but super duper cool to me. Um, she used to come to Lucha Underground shows all the time, um, and and she put out some some accusations about David Lagana about uh, him trying to push up on her when they were in a a cohabitating scenario where they were not uh, intimate with each other. But he tried to turn the corner, and she said no, and then he. He fucked with her and he fucked with her business and kicked her out on the street and and did some other stuff. Now that that has come to light, he has been uh, he has stepped down from right. being the NWA vice president, but he was also their main booker. He was really kind of the the main guy at NWA. He was the guy responsible for the storylines on Power and what uh, the the good stuff that honestly they've done with television recently. So. Uh, do we put David Lagana on the list for his uh, his his scenario here? Well, Justin, I'm glad you asked because first of all, I'd like to say, even though I had blocked her on Twitter for asking me to be on the podcast with Brandon since he's blocked on Twitter, <laughs> uh, 
I fully believe and support Liz Savage in this, and she's brave for doing it. She's good for stepping out and sharing, but I got, I got to talk a little bit about some alleged stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, not involving her, but involving the other person in question. I feel weird even mentioning the name in the same sentence. I don't want to like get legal issues or anything, but there was a little book called ring of hell that had ad- allegations against Dave Lagana in them, in the book, a published book that you could get at Barnes and Noble and buy it. You know what year that book came out? When was that? 2008 Jesus. and people still hire this guy. So let me tell you, not only was this book published, but Paul London's done interviews talking about the allegations, mentioning them They completely match up with what's in the book. And now this comes out. Okay. So it's like mm, smoke and fires. Yeah. <laughs> multiple fires. And this is something that, I mean, there's been allegations around for at least 12 years, and uh, that's just when it's been published in the book. So, uh, well, I will say, I, I will say this: the 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 one slightly admirable thing about this is the fact that uh, he doesn't seem to be fighting it. He seems to have just stepped away, and and I think uh, is acknowledging that this is a bigger issue, um, and that the performers that are currently in NWA should not be affected by what is going on with him. Now it leaves them with a huge void. So they have to restructure everything they're doing. Um, Hopefully Billy Corrigan is uh, capable of doing that or finding somebody who can do that because, you know, I don't know that that's really his wheelhouse. And, uh, and allegedly the person that he was allegedly creeping on was employed in 2005 in WWE. Yeah. So, uh, which is Mordecai, Kevin Furtig, allegedly. Allegedly. I think I like we've said allegedly enough times. I think people know how we really fucking feel about this. I think it's fucked up. I think it's shitty. And I think people should have cut ties 15 fucking years ago. But here we are. All right. So that's one vote for putting Lagana on the wall of shame from Case. Anybody have any objections to putting him on the wall Pin of shame? Pin him up there. Pin him up there. All on right. The there it is. Wall of shame. Jojo Feeney, Kevin Kleinrock, somehow, Brit Wrestling, Pedos, Predos, Perverts, and all bullies in wrestling, Jeffrey Briggs, JT Wilcox, and Tessa Blanchard, and now Dave Lagana. Okay, I officially take Kevin Kleinrock off of the list because I don't want him sharing that company. Oh, look at that, Kleinrock! We found somebody so bad that you actually get off the list. Found the loophole. You found the loophole. do it for a mask. All right, Kevin, you're off the list, but these guys still want their figures, so don't blame oh, me. I have nothing oh, to do with it. Oh, shit. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I still want my uh, figures I list. I think it's, it's July 3rd. To, July I think it's the naughty away. step. We need a naughty step. There it's we go. wait to mid July, I think, for that. Oh, no, that's bullshit. I was promised. No, it's July. July. I bought no, these figures like seven years ago, it feels like. I know, that's when I bought them too. I'm about to buy... December 12th um, or something, on it? What, what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy uh, some New Japan ones. I think I'm going to get Okada, uh, Naito, and... Um, All I'm saying is don't make me buy the AEW drum. figures and, re- and review those ones on this show. Don't make me do it. I, I'm going to because Cody is a friend and Brandy is a friend, and I think that they would like the honest feedback. I think that they are genuinely yeah. the kind of people that would like to hear what a real collector thinks about their action figures and how poopy they are. Now, I think, they, like Mike I think they, you know what though? Cody and Brandy look great. Those figures are awesome. They, they knew who to get right. And who to kind of go <laughs> well, it, uh, yes, those yeah, yeah. know what side their bread's buttered on. Apparently. I mean, it was also mentioned from Jeremy Padauer that lighting has a lot to do with how these how it affects how these uh, figures look in pictures. And I've seen the examples and it's, it's worlds different. That's why I started getting funky lighting for myself so that I look better. <laughs> yeah. I just yeah, said the Jericho one was bad because of the foil, the gold, gold foil. I, 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 I thought Jericho's was bad because he looks like he's shitting his pants. Mm-hmm. I, I thought the Jericho's was bad. Okay. Oh, but uh, the Ray Phoenix one, the AEW version is pretty bad. I think the rate, yeah. The I'm one that's on the commercial? Uh, yeah, I'm really glad the one, I'm glad we got the Ver, the Lucha Brothers that we got. Um, yeah, no, it's interesting. It's going to be interesting, you know, to see their toys. I guess toys are it's, interesting. It's kind of cool that they're all in scale with each other and they can all play with each other. 
though I, I do wish the boss fight studio ones were in the other scale that they do the Vitruvian hacks because those toys oh, are awesome. Yeah. Um, those are three and three quarter inch scale. So, you know, like GI Joe size, star Wars size. Uh, I, I wish we had a line hint, hint of, we need looped over a trivia hacks. I wish, they, I wish they had the it's new Japan sense. death rider Mox, And I wish Mox was still death rider. I don't like his AEW gimmick, by the way. Uh, oh, I guy, really wish guy, that predator, um, alpha figure in the UK came with the code so I could have it on Predator Hunting Grounds. Oh, I, I, I wish stop. I wish that my Predator Alpha figure didn't fall off my entertainment center and now his mask is somewhere under my TV that I'm gonna have to dig. I, for. Hey Meef, I will tell you this though. I have had several people ask me if they could buy the Outlaw Funko Pop. Oh yeah. Yeah. Bob. And there's only one, so it's not for sale, but no, there's, there's two. two. There's two. Oh, I have yeah, yeah, yeah. Brett Byron wanted them for butt plugs. Oh, that's. Bad. I have the whole set. It's the banner on our on one of our social medias. Yes, I know, I know, I know. I, I think but I they're got... not the, the one I have is not for sale. Casey and got the best one. Casey's not for sale either. Uh, giant no matter, you dildo. hear that? You hear that, Klein Rock? Casey's not for sale. Oh, if you want stop one, it. he could buy you with a freaking yeah, razor for your balls in a heartbeat. It's that easy. See, honestly, at this point, I'd probably hurt myself and he'd be back on the list. Did you yeah. say thank you to him for the for the generous gift that he sent you? I he did. did. And then I, I said, hey, how the fuck did you get my address, stalker? No, um, I've ordered stuff from Lucha Shop in the past. But I know that's not how he got my address. I know one of you guys sold me out since it seems all of you picked which masks you wanted. So uh, we gave him your personal Facebook account and told him all of your real names and gave him your address and phone number and mother's maiden name. And now, oh, he's, dude, dude, and now he's gonna are. post it all over Twitter. <laughs> Honestly, me and Kevin have been Facebook friends for like years and years and years. So uh, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, I, I gave him I gave him your home address and I told him which one you wanted. Thank hey, you. you guys want right to talk about Aztec Warfare? Do you guys want to talk no, about Aztec Warfare? I really don't. Let's wrap the show up. <laughs> Let's talk about figures. Let's become a figure podcast. Oh, but I love talking about figures. I kind of want to talk about Aztec Warfare, but we first, we should probably take our last break of the show. Let's hear it. If you're listening to this and you haven't visited LuchaCentral.com, it's time to do it. LuchaCentral.com is the online home for Lucha Libre, where you can get all of the top news in English and in Spanish. Find the best curated video content and original content not seen anywhere else. Find when Lucha Libre events would be happening in your area. Find photo galleries from top photographers covering Lucha Libre around the world. From weekly polls to annual awards. Seen and read by top executives in all of the major Lucha Libre promotions across the globe. And on top of that, it's free. LuchaCentral.com, your centralized place for all things Lucha Libre. Figurines. Y'all see my figures over here? You got. You guys got to read this Ring of Hell. That was racist. It's very figures without you. and fucked up. And it, it, it <laughs> does. Say figures with the R. <laughs> figures with attitude. Uh, uh, that's a funny joke. That should be our podcast. Our <laughs> toy podcast. <laughs> FWA. FWA. I love it. Figures with attitude. Just a little action, man. You just have to say, and you just say it straight as hell. Like, yeah, these are my figures with attitude. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's like hardcore Holly and Steve Blackman and. Uh, I would need to put At least Steve Blackman has the right name. Oh, um, speaking of the N-word, um <laughs> they they have they finally they Stay finally quiet. made they finally made a stone cold Masters of the WWE <laughs> universe, but you have to buy Hulk Hogan to get it. Oh, oh <laughs> that race right, yeah. They come with a ring. They come with the Snake Mountain ring. Like the ring I have now is Castle Grayskull, and that one's Snake Mountain. And Stone Hulk Hogan. Got scary snake eyes. And the hands. Uh, yeah, and snake hands. And hands. You know, I got a picture of Cody Rhodes, and I'm gonna tell my son that was Hulk Hogan. <laughs> So like I was saying, Josh, bro, this episode's running a little long, so deal with it. Because we're yeah, going to talk about right. Aztec Warfare, because all four of these motherfuckers here made me watch wrestling again. I didn't want to watch wrestling again. I was going on like two, maybe three weeks not watching wrestling. I was happy. 
I was playing Fist of the North Star. I was reading comic books and shit. I even built a Lego TIE fighter helmet. It was pretty awesome. But no, these guys are like, oh, we got to do a podcast. They sent you a free mask, so you better do it. Go, 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 go. <laughs> hey, I didn't say that shit. That must have been Byron over there. Actually, that's, that's, what I, that's just what I felt from the inside. Like, that's how I felt you guys were judging me, yeah. even though you didn't come out and say it. So I watched this little yeah, episode true. of Underground. What do you think? Was it was it worth coming back to wrestling for the very first Aztec Warfare case? Oh, dude, it was so fun because, like, first of all, they're like, this is Aztec warfare. Anyone can win. Here comes Cortez Castro. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Ricky Mandel. Dude, I had my money on Bale when that first aired. Oh, yeah. Bale, who was biting people. Before. He's a real B-boy as well. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, I, okay. Okay. We got to oh, talk about oh, those. So Cisco oh, gets the this little cholo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It rolls uh, in solo. Stryker said that. Striker said this little cholo oh, rolls wait, in. That was, that was Matt Stryker doing commentary with Vampiro because I thought it was fucking Louis Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, uh, this little cholo rolls in solo. <laughs> and then and then he did say uh what was what was the the B-boy Cisco from one? Oh, a, real B boy from, from the street. In real life, yeah. What? You know what? First of all, if you're going to pander to the smart what? fans, that's disgusting, Matt Stryker. That's disgusting. With your yeah. gravelly ass voice. Well, he talks about Ricky Mandel as well. Been a, been a big time American wrestler <laughs> in California. Oh, so and then they're like, no, that was that was Buddy Landell. Oh, like there was just uh, Ricky like, Marvin. I, I grew to really like Stryker later. But I'm here to tell you well, that uh, makes one of us, Justin, and, and because he an, stole the wrestling name game championship. Here we go. Again. I forfeit because, because I, you didn't show I up. I was following his former career path. Showing up is half the half the qualification of winning. OK, listen, dude, you got to watch. The, fucking, I mean, Tommy nice Dreamer part. was in the building. It's the easiest part. Stryker felt like we had attacked his ego. What, what were we going to do? Oh, oh yeah. I, Look, look, first of all, Byron, showing up isn't half the battle. Knowing is half the battle. And the other half is violence. Byron, can we roll in the clip of what Stryker had to say when he took the crown from from Casey? Can we roll that in right here? No. (laughs) Fine. (laughs) That's too much work, Byron. Don't do it. And also, Matthew Stryker, Mm -hmm. that is your real name. And it's not. (gasps) Dude. (laughs) Don't say that. Wrestlers of names are all real. Dude, it's going to be awesome when we get the other Matt Stryker and have him on the show and I fucking destroy him. The one with the eyebrows, the Stryker with the Y. Or just some random person from Iowa. I remember that. And you know, you know who would uh, give themselves a name of an already existing wrestler? Someone who sucks at the wrestling name game. Wow. This is this is tremendous. This is what you this, guys, we're not even supposed to be talking about this right now, but this is so tremendous. The have you guys between Casey and Stryker is palpable? On that, on that same topic, have you guys Googled cats with eyebrows? Yes, I have. Uh and um some of those are fake though. No, they're all real. No, dude, the one with the mustache, there's another picture later down that he doesn't have the eyebrows. They added the eyebrows. He really Why do you guys use the power of the internet for evil? There's so much good out there. There's like rainbows and like episodes of My Little Pony on YouTube. I'm sorry. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, first it's K-pop and now it's bronyism. I mean, no, bronyism has been around for a while, dude. No, but I mean Justin's actual yeah. tastes. All yeah. right, so the Aztec dancers and the live Aztec music, I thought was a awesome. great touch for Aztec warfare, and I thought it was cool that they used that for the entrance. Uh, and I thought of it was announcement cool for how, each guy. How Dario, being direct as well. how, how Dario claimed mm-hmm. to uh, invent this match um, makes me think Krista Joseph's never seen some all Japan in his life, but you know, whatever. Okay, so what is the difference here? Like, it, it's got a little bit of a Royal Rumble format. It has pinfalls and submissions instead of over the top rope. Correct. Which is cool because then you get like little mini matches actually in here. Guys have to roll yeah. out credibly mm-hmm. instead of just taking. But it's breeders. cool. You know, all Japan's just been doing that shit since the 1970s, but, you know, Dario invented it. He's a heel. He can lie. It's fine. Are you questioning? He's Spanish. 
the esteemable uh, Christopher DeJoseph on his writing style and technique of this particular match. KZ. Don't I do that every single week we do this show? I, I mean, thought it was going to. I think you do it every week when we don't even do the show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> you, you can do Since we're an action figure podcast now, speaking of DeJoseph, didn't we have, <laughs> didn't have a, is it there a Chris DeJoseph action figure? Oh, no, 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 that's a big Dick no. Johnson action figure. No. Oh no, maybe we can action pop it up just... on the on the Twitter, Justin. Wow. No, we can't. We have the picture. No, oh, that would that would wow. ban us. That would ban us from. This is a man that I have the utmost respect for. Oh, me too. I love DJ, and he he said he would do the show if the rest of you guys weren't assholes, and here we are. There's only one of us on this dais right now that has been banned and blocked by Christopher Joseph. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in, in all honesty it probably should be me but he actually respects my opinions because i don't kiss butt and you should have come to the fourth season at some point in time because i yeah. feel like if you had been there to be like chris why don't you try it this way on a couple of things season four could have been better and i blame I, casey uh, honestly i don't think anyone would ever listen to my ideas because they think i'm too much of a weirdo mark and i know the thing is them. they always listen to your ideas they just don't ever tell you they are because they don't yeah. want your head to go like giant size and not be able to fit in that tiny little screen on our show See, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that would happen um and then charge them the ideas i'm very famous from my other podcast uh another miserable podcast and i don't let that get to me at all um we're actually going to be doing a uh, very special Nightmare on Elm Street 3 commentary. I'm uh, actually looking forward to that, by the way. And I really, yeah, I really, really liked the, uh, yeah. the Friday the 13th Part 4. I, I thought that one was great. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Our, our latest episode is a fan request episode where people ask us to watch things. Where, where good old Owen, Owen, you know, Owen, MC Fart Bay, Byron. Yeah. Yeah, you guys, you guys have hung out with them. I bet you you watch this movie called The Jackhammer Massacre that was fucking terrible. Didn't even have Goldberg in it. I want to give a big shout out to, to Vic. Hashtag Man, kill. I should have gotten my Hashtag request. Kill your Hashtag kill your friends. Uh, I should have gotten my request for Basket Case 2. Make you guys watch that shit. Oh, anyway, awesome. um, but Urban uh, suggested Freaked. So he has the mine would be is <laughs> this mine would be soft for digging. Me, me, I have a question for you, dumb fuck. Is this the first episode yes. where they refer to it as yes. Arrow from Oh Arrow from the Depths of Hell? I knew he was gonna ask that question straight away. You, you know, and this was the first one? Jesus Christ. This was <laughs> the first. I'm okay, talking about cool. uh um King. <laughs> King Escobar Santos racist name, whatever his what was his name back then? King Cuerno. King he hit the oh, arrow Cuerno. The Cuerno. Oh, oh, it was God. awesome. Uh, I don't know why me for abusing Byron is so much funnier than any of the rest of us do. It is. It is very and, funny. And, and again, Cuerno was getting his shit and doing his little, uh, you know, stalking. Wait, did you say King Cornhole was getting his shit in? That's what it sounded Cuerno. like. Cuerno. Cuerno. <laughs> oh, Cuerno. Oh, I know. No, I was going to talk about him eliminating evil East, but then you guys went and made it like really uncomfortable. All right. So let me, let me just go down this list. So let me do the entrance first. You got number one, Phoenix, two, Mundo, three, Cisco, four, Cuerno, five, Son of Havoc, six, Pimpinella, seven, Prince Puma, eight, evil East, Cortero. nine, Drago, <laughs> 10, Bale, yeah. 11, Cortez Castro, 12, Ricky, Ricky uh, Mandel. I'm Marvin. Off. Um, 13, Big Rick, the other Rick in this match. 14, Pentagon, or as, uh... Pentagon. As, Pentagon. uh, Evie Dub would call him shoot name, gimmick name. Oh, uh, God, no, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, that didn't do it. Uh, number 15, Superfly, getting at least one more appearance here in Lucha Underground. Number 16, Chavo with a chair. Number 17, Masquerita Sagrada. 18, Sexy Star. Number 19, the dishwasher from down the street, El Mariachi Loco. And what number 20, Mil Muertes with Katrina. Katrina. You know, um, I did like the whole time Dario Cueto was making number two jokes and Matt Stryker on commentary made it up, made it like a second place thing when clearly he was saying that he was a piece of shit yeah. and that's why he's number two. Now, I, I do have a question though. Was this the whole roster? Like, who's missing here? Uh, Demon? 
No, no one. No, he comes in. I mean, yeah, he shows up anyway, but. Yeah, famous bee's missing. That's it. Oh, B is the only one that didn't get in here. Yeah. And, and Masaro was still on security then. And yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't wrestling yet, but uh, famous B was, and he wasn't there. Um, Why did not use a Verna? Oh, Averna no, wait. I, no, we haven't seen our Hennis yet, right? No, our Hennis. I think our Hennis was around, but were, were yeah, any, no, you guys at this yet. one? Did you, were you guys no. at this thing live? No, I didn't go until um, like the trios championship thing and the uh, Superfly getting unmasked. Okay, so you were there then, and I didn't show up until the Return oh, of Dragon, because I, I had an interesting question about this one. What What is the time interval supposed to be between combatants here? It was supposed to be two minutes, but it was not two minutes. At was all. this one I like know, that too? Because I know in in future Aztec warfares that I had been at, uh, two minutes is a uh, is in what I like to call Japanese seconds, as in Krista Joseph is in the back and just making up whenever the two minutes yeah, is yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. No, no, not true. Not true. Cue the drummer. Cue the drummer. Yeah, not true. that's how you're supposed to do it. It's a TV show, season mm-hmm. four. They started with Aztec warfare and they kept the clock honest in it. Fucked up. Everyone and was turned it off. Their, but like by competitor number six, didn't they? Yeah. Like you're you're still hitting your you know your finish your last spot while the opponent is making their entrance and it, everything is just. Um. Uh, yeah. But I will say this: as much as I love almost every bit of the Lucha Underground locker room in the final Aztec Warfare, there wasn't a single motherfucker in the back who didn't come out front and take liberties with the goddamn stopwatch. Everybody went long and uh, fuck them because we would have been in the show for real if they hadn't. Sons of bitches. Fuck the entire. I should put the entire Lucha Underground locker room of season four on the goddamn wall of shame. Fuck them. I'm oh, glad I couldn't go to that day. <laughs> I was so <laughs> mad, Jim. So mad. Um, OK, so let's talk a little bit about the fun stuff here. What, what, were, what were the fun spots? We could talk about individual eliminations. Here's what I liked about this episode. I thought that what we were getting here was Lucha Underground taking a gimmick match and making a moment out of it. And this was the way that NWA and WCW had been early on, that a big gimmick match could just be a regular episode of TV. It didn't have to be necessarily a pay-per-view or something else. It was just like a, a couple week build up, and then they would have a big moment. And I, I love that about this episode. And I thought they failed with the first ladder match doing it with the briefcase um, and, and the money thing in general. I don't think did that. But this was where I think they finally hit their stride. And, and DJ loves a gimmick match. We know that. Um, of really just being able to do a gimmick match without having it be the end of season or be, you know, some pay-per-view moment. Like this whole episode, just a gimmick match. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. This is this isn't the best gimmick match in the history of the show. That's clearly clearly grave consequences. But um, I thought you were gonna say the Halloween one. <sighs> don't get the me monsters. Hell of War. <clears throat> don't don't. Hell of War was a death match. I don't even know if that you was can consider that. Yeah. A gimmick match. I, I mean, Hell of War was one of the best. It was like death match light compared to some of the death matches that I know that me and Casey have watched, it was death match light, but it was still like, Hey, this is a real national promotion doing a death match. So right, right. I'm not mad at any of it. Yeah. Um, El Ray lawyers actually watch the show. They'd be getting a lot of trouble. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like, I, I like, I like the precedent that this was setting at the time. Hey, hey, um, was, Mief, was this the first one that you watched back in the day? This is the very first episode that I ever watched. Cause what they did was they actually put it out li- um, free. I don't know if it was shown live, like um, at the same time as it was shown in America live, but they actually put out the whole episode f- um, free for him to watch on YouTube, I think. Because usually like their YouTube stuff is blocked from the, to the UK and stuff. This was the, um, this was the first match that I actually knew the spoiler ahead of time. I knew that Puma won. Um, cause it had been all over the internet and, and especially Japanese wrestling fans were talking about Ricochet winning a major U S title. Um, so this one did get spoiled for me, but only by like a day or so. Oh, Ricochet I'm, didn't win the match, dude. Prince Puma. Sorry. Puma, Prince Puma, the, uh, yeah. the street kid with no previous wrestling experience from yes. Boyle Heights. Never wrestled in Japan. In life. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't mean to strike her it. Sorry. My bad. 
Um, well, you no, would, I, I you think that this was a cool. Like, if you were going to strike her, you would have been called. Oh, Ricochet, the 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 kitty cat of coolness, or some bullshit. Wow. Come on, you got more respect for him than that. Jim, what do you think of the first Aztec Warfare? Fan, not a fan? I mean, I'm a fan, and this episode is actually what I use to get people to start watching Lucha Underground. Uh, right. Especially, like, because you have pretty much all the talent there, with the exception of, like, the few names that you mentioned. But, you know, when this first aired, it was on demand. So I'd be like, listen, this is, this is the episode you got to watch to get into Lucha Underground. You may have not seen the previous episodes, but this pretty much brings you up to speed. Plus, you get to see everyone do some cool shit. And then you get to see the first uh, champion in the organization. So, yeah, I was a fan when I first saw it. Still a fan of it. And I'm still thankful that I wasn't there for the very last one. (laughs) Grave grave consequences with uh, Phoenix and Bill Muertes is the match that I use to get people to watch Lucha Underground. I'm like, hey, do you want to see a casket match that's actually fucking good? And they're like, that doesn't exist. Shut up, Casey. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Well, the thing I can point to with this episode is like, hey, do you want to see a mini get decapitated by a former WWE oh, star? Because yeah, that happened. Jesus. Um, shoot, decapitate. What? Like and what? Then, wow! Okay. How did Big so, Rick even think that it was okay to go that stiff? That oh, was because nuts. It's the same guy that did that shit, the sexy star in the Gift of the Gods match, and then got fired for it. Well. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, the fact that he still had a job the next day after this, like, that was not a clothesline or a lariat. That was somebody trying to knock an Adam's apple out of a little person's Yeah, uh, And then he just smacked him in the chin really fucking hard and uh, really probably hurt him bad. Yeah. But F- Phoenix also killed him by drop yeah. kicking him mid <laughs> <laughs> That was a great spot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. I mean. He actually moved him. Short of kill shot, there was a lot of potatoes in this match. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> future um, reference. Yeah, future reference. Just tease, just teasing future episodes. Keep coming oh, back, guys. Oh, I apologize to go back to. Oh no, I'll leave it for later. I'll leave no, it for the next team. But go, go ahead. I was just gonna say because you were talking about um, Shane Strickland and the way he was going. Now he's fighting Gargano. I know. They heard me. They must. They've been watching. I know. They're doing it for Jim. They're just going, who do these guys like? Strickland lives <laughs> matter, bro. Give, give my man a shot. Um, They're like, who is my favorite in Lucha Underground and who's my favorite in NXT? Let's just put them together in a match finally. Yeah. That's what. That's kind of what needs to happen. All right. Um, where's the, there was another spot I wanted to talk about. Uh, fucking Son of Havoc, wasn't it? That surely wasn't what I wanted to talk about. Oh, it was it Evil Mariachi Lucas eliminated um, by super kick. the thrill of the hunt? No, it wasn't that. Uh, or was it the, best the, kick. the spear to sexy star? Oh. The spear to sexy star was solid. No, it was Katrina. Good lord! Oh People damn! Lord. Get that Maxine, aka Carly, aka Katrina, whatever the fuck you want to call her. People forget that Took like a chump. Okay. You can talk shit about some of her wrestling. Like her move set wasn't great when she was Maxine or whatever. But she could always bump. She was always great at bumping. And the fucking bumps that she took here, like she took the, she almost took the big bump from Mill. But then the insecurity that she took from, was it, it was Johnny, right? It was Johnny. Johnny. Fucking picture perfect. Probably one of the best moves in the whole match. And she looked better than Evie looked. Not that they gave Evie much time or really a chance. I'm not blaming that on her at all, but she still, Katrina looked better. She looked better than Sexy Star. And all she did was grab a foot and do a couple of little bump spots, but the insecurity was fucking classic. There was nobody in that place that wasn't like, oh shit, he just kicked that bitch's head off. I I I think she legitimately ate it, didn't she? She just. Yeah, she leaned into it. She leaned into it. She did it the way you're supposed to do it when you're selling a big move. It was totally safe. It was performed perfectly. She did not get hurt. She leaned into it and then she laid the fuck out on the apron. It was fucking epic. It was like every time I see insecurities now, it's like people go, oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, dude, if somebody did an insecurity to you for real, like I've been kicked in the back of the head. You, that is real pain. Like in the pain, side of the head pain, even pain. as well. Because some like, of them are like, you know. Oh my God, you see somebody get cold cocked with an insecurity in real life. They should be out cold. They should sell it exactly the way she did. 
It made Mundo look great. It was an awesome move. The other person I will put over, believe it or not, in this match, our homeboy, Mariachi Loco. No, Mariachi Loco. One of the best 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 two minutes of his career. Best super super kick kick. in a long time. Great dropkick. Great dropkick. Unlike some other bitch who's five foot two tall and wears a cowboy hat. (laughs) Um, he knows actually how to do a proper super kick across the chin, not into the throat. Wow. Yes. yes. I, don't I said it. Looks I'm, better. I, I think that he, he legit looks like a million bucks right here. And Was I that HBK? Say, yeah, fuck HBK. Wow. Wait, wait, wait. How do you now, he's, not, now he's not going to listen to the show. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Look, sorry, Shawn, sorry. Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels. Look, after last the week, I don't even think sorry, people, friends sorry, are listening HBK. to the show. Sorry, HBK. They they go on the uh, the wall for being pieces of shit long ago. Wow. <laughs> well, Meef is just just no. Oh, yeah, but if you, if you know they want to talk about the, the boys and the paying your dues, the, the, you're not what, five, six, with... five six biggest pieces of shit in wrestling in the last 20, 30 years. Yeah. Preach on it, me. If you're not done with that, we've got two words for you. I mean, it's true. I mean, there are stories that are confirmed, and people laugh where he was having sex with another man's wife while his friends were watching out for him. Not they weren't watching him do it; they were watching the door. They weren't. They weren't legally married. And also the fact that, like, you know, okay. H- how did this get into a quick conversation? Cry. I don't even know what happened, Jim. By the way, I'm just, I'm just I, along for the ride, brother. I, you know, I like Jim. I, I like Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash. And Kevin Nash in the X Division is better than most of what most of wrestling on today. Hey, I don't what know. Did we get here? It's from, it, it stems from a super kick. That's all how this happened. A mariachi loco super kick. Transitioned into this somehow. Well, Mariachi Loco, I would like to say that you looked fabulous in this match. Yeah. I could totally see why they wanted to push that gimmick. It's a shame that your gimmick got shelved shortly after this because you really did look like a million bucks. You're out there with a ton of guys who had been in the business for a long time, you know, looking good with with Puma and Mundo and, and you know, Macias, whatever is, name is he was. Is Razor Ramon back on Twitter? Shit. <laughs> Uh, we didn't we didn't talk about oh oh you know who else was in the click you guys remember when x-pac tore his asshole <laughs> so here's here's the thing son of havoc took out pimpy with the shooting star i like the guy son of havoc and i think he's fun i have not seen him once that makes properly, properly set up his shooting star he just kind of like He'll do a move and then go stand on the turnbuckle and wait for someone to like roll into the exact spot. <clears throat> it's, almost, it's almost like he waiting for the booty back, scoot to the right spot. It's, where the, it's almost like he learned how to wrestle in a backyard. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, other than that, I think it's a lot of fun. Um, One of my least favorite things in wrestling is when you see somebody trying to position for the move. Oh yeah, I, shuffle, I'm just shuffle, shuffle. I come from the ECW school, and and Heyman would yell at people like, "You don't move." Either the guy figures out a spot that you can he can do where you're at, or you don't do the spot, and he comes over, grabs your hair, picks you up, hits you in the mush again. You go back down in a better spot. Nobody Excuse does. Me, nobody sir. does the booty scoot in ECW. You'll never Just see it. Well. I you don't know what to take. You scoot One easy your booty across my mat because One we easy all know I don't wash these mats, and something is gonna crawl up your ass. Like my client, Rock Lesnar. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's amazing. Casey's going to have no voice tomorrow, and he's going to blame us again, and he's yeah. going to totally quit the show. He's going to be like, if I, every time I do the show with you guys, my fucking voice goes, fuck you guys. You you guys want to know something else that was interesting? Oh, um, God. Not if you're, you're being ripped. Oh, no, it's, and it's, it's 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 right. So when Chavo hit That's Sexy right. Star with the chair oh. episodes oh. ago, he almost like caused brain damage to her future children. He hit her so hard in the head, and now I think she that check, that check was in the mail anyway, Byron. And then and then she chair shot him back, and he totally he works. He has the hands up. He makes the bump on time. He totally like there was not a receipt. Well, I'm trying to talk about the match. We're listening, bro. We're totally listening to you, Byron. Right? 
I'm really warm. I'm really warm. Hey, you guys remember when the one, two, three kid wrestled Bret Hart? That was a really good match. He was in the click, you know. One, two, three kid, not Bret Hart. Oh, Bret Hart was not in the click. No. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, for, for an episode based on Aztec warfare, there's a real warfare on staying on topic. Jim, Jim you should know this by now. You see what I've been doing, oh, man? How did, I even wrote, I even wrote the episode outline this time. Like I'm supposed hey, to, guys. Yo. I actually did my homework. There's notes. Everyone got them. So, hey, yo. Yeah, so Puma won. So Puma won. Uh, Puma yeah. is your very first Lucha Underground champion. Hey, Shitty belt. Survey Puma. shine. Oh, Are yeah. you here to listen to on topic discussion? Or this are you is, here uh, to listen is, to the MMM show? Survey says another one for the good guys. This is the original shitty belt. Um, what did you guys think when you first saw this belt? Were you oh, like, I knew I, I knew for an instant. I'm like, okay, well, something's happening to this belt because it's too shitty to be a real one. <laughs> no, what sucks though is the belt they were using at the same time was the same belt, just as shitty. Like that, and that was their real belt. <laughs> you can get a shitty replica from high spots of the triple A belt that looks exact. It might be the real belt. Has <laughs> Evie Dub or DJ or Roach ever told us the story of why they switched the belt on the show? Because everyone said it fucking sucked. Well, I know that. <laughs> I think they decided to 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 retire it very quickly. Who who still has that? Is that in the archives of everything? Yeah, it's on the cage. Was. It's in the prop department. The broken one is in the prop department, and the backup one that is not broken is in the prop department. Do you know where um, the keys are to the prop department? No, yeah, Van Wagner can't even get them. So even Dub just... wants the bull. You heard him on this show talk about how he wants the bull. Nobody can get in there, man. It's locked up. So what you're saying is we should have just taken what we could have when we took the tour. Because yeah. it wouldn't have mattered anyway. Yes, we should have looked at we should have looked Eric Van Wagner right in the eye and been like, Eric, you don't really need the gift of the God's belt tonight, do you? Because we can take it back to the prop department right now and put it in storage no. for you. We could have just gone to the prop There's department. A, and the prop department is apartment. right near my car. <laughs> you, you could have got me my corner stuff, but no. Yeah, no, we wouldn't have done that. Oh, no. oh God, me on that tour. It's they had like the whole Cuerno Don't, outfit and the middle outfit up on the mannequin. Oh, I know. I've seen the picture. Don't worry. Oh. Do, you think, do you think those mannequins come back to life? Like the sing, the cinematic masterpiece known as Mannequin or the television masterpiece known as Today's Special on Nickelodeon? Oh, I, Today's Special reference. Thank you. So good. <laughs> So good. you should have just gone with today's special. You don't even need to re reference mannequin. That's like referencing Splash. It's too easy. Jeffrey the mannequin. I think that was his name. The Shape of Water. <sighs> Me. <laughs> Dead silence. I love it. I it's the know. same film. No. Nah, shot look, for shot. Look, mannequin was great because uh, it has that, it had that tremendous song. It's Jim all Cattrall. stuck in all of your heads, and I'm not going to sing it because my voice. Oh, hurts. Yes. Because these assholes said, "Casey, do the Paul Hyman." Speaking of speaking of which, Casey, that just to you know, it's Paul it's Hyman. Hyman. That was that was I did uh, say Hyman. Starship. Because well, we previously we used to do this <laughs> thing when I was a kid. We used, we used to do this thing when I was a kid where we would say his name was Paul Hyman, and we would go, "Hyman, I'm going to rip you apart." Jim, pretty, I have a question for you. Who complains about this show going long and having to record for way too long? Josh. Hey Josh. <laughs> Hi, Josh. <laughs> Hi, Josh. I feel like okay. Josh is looking out for my best interests. If Josh Pillow is listening to this part of the show, Josh, you, you have to tell me what your critique of this part of the show is. Anyway, all right. So I want to ask everybody's opinion on the state of wrestling during COVID. Who's who's had it going on the best out of NXT, Impact, and AEW? The answer NXT. the answer is um, um, whoever's doing the deathmatch drive-in tomorrow on Internet Wrestling TV because I might actually watch that. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's called That's the deathmatch drive-in. Oh so yeah, to be, what's up? To be safe for the fans, they um, instead of having fans sitting around, you got to stay in your cars and watch the wrestling. And then it's people fucking each other up right outside your car. It sounds like the greatest idea ever. I I I am down for this. As uh, long as it's not like the uh, the backlot brawl from Zona Twenty Three. Oh, oh I was 23. at that WrestleMania live. Oh no, no, the one on NXT, not the one at WrestleMania. Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. By the way, for those studios, one 
whatever that was. Is that what they yeah. called that? Was that at Universal? Uh, 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 no, the the NXT one was in was that full sale? Oh, it was the full sale parking lot? My my yeah, old full sale parking lot. Yeah, like in that fake city thing. But yeah. the one from WrestleMania twelve was at Walt Disney Studios. Right. Mm. So I, whenever I have people come to the lot for uh, you know f- to give a tour or whatever, if they're a, if they're a mark, I always bring you them go there. straight there because you're a mark. I love it. Yeah, I'm like. By the way, if this looks familiar, it's because this is the actual site of the Hollywood backlot brawl. This yeah. is this is where Roddy Piper got hit with the car way too fucking hard because he thought he could jump up on the windshield. So yeah. I'm ge- <laughs> I- I'm guessing, Jim, that your your take is that NXT has been doing the best it, during coronavirus, but. Be, feel free to disagree with me. I mean, I feel like it has because there was that period of time during Dynamite where you could just tell that, hey, we're just putting matches together. Mm-hmm. And understandably so, there was no, you know, they didn't have all the talent, but they were just putting matches together just to have a show. So it was just a lot of, you know, jobber matches. Yeah. Which I get, like, you're really limited. And I believe this is when they were still filming in Atlanta. So they would do like multiple weeks at a time, whereas NXT, even though it was limited, they still had more of a program. Granted, obviously, they were it was because they weren't as adhering to COVID-19 protocols as they should have been. But which we found out uh, very, very fast this week. Yeah. News over there for those guys. Very much so. And but even but as far as just a viewing product, I I have to go with NXT overall and anything else, because even with. All the other shows, whether it be Impact, Raw, SmackDown, whatever, I just felt like NXT was still the better one because they had a small enough pool of talent where they could still do all of the programs or at can least I, most of them. Can I vote for Battle Arts, even though it was like 15 years ago? And but they're if, just going dude, on. If that, is that's the wrestling that's keeping you company during COVID? I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I should throw New Japan in there as well. Like New yeah. Japan should be. Don't get them started on New Japan. <laughs> Yeah, but it was a four hours doing. Yeah. Oh, okay, first of all, fuck you, Gato. Oh, I'm not. I'm not caught up, so I don't want to talk about it. Plus all right, me. Look- which one's your fave? NXT. It's. I mean, it's just, it, I've never watched an episode of AEW because I, I wouldn't even have a clue what's going on there because it just seems like a lot of shit. Um, Impact. I haven't been interested in years because well, it's it's Impact, but NXT actually is. Even though they've got the smaller pool of talent, it means they're actually getting used a lot better and more condensed rather than like Santa Escobar, for instance. Obviously, I'm invested in that, but you would have probably gone two or three weeks before without seeing him between. Whereas now, even if he's just going out doing little promos, and his promos have been amazing. The one that he did this week was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I think uh, um, I'm going to be honest. I think NXT is a better show than Raw, and I haven't watched enough SmackDown to know. SmackDown seems like the show that they're investing the most in. Um, and right now, to me, honest to God, of just the WWE shows, I feel like Raw is the number three show. And the thing as well is, is I think with um, <laughs> NXT is a lot of the talent, of the talent who've been on the Indies a long time, and they've worked in things like Lucha Underground and all these other programs. So they're very attuned to kind of listening to ideas, taking ideas and character ideas and doing things with the character ideas, producing a TV product. Yeah. Then some of these other wrestlers who have been brought through the WWE system, which are obviously trained to the WWE TV product. But in fact, that's what's been losing them viewers on their other shows is that stale, bog standard type um you know, typecast or kind of like always going to back to type on their characters and also the product they produce. Whereas these new guys have been, it's a lot more creative down in NXT. It's a lot more producing a better product. Byron, what do you think? What's your take? Which one I like do you a, like? I like AEW. Um, I mean, they had to rewrite a month and a half or two months worth of shows on, on the spot. Um, and so, you know, they had the, the tournament, but everything else kind of suffered. But I, I think AEW did the best. I think Overall, every show had been fun, and it t- and those NXT shows without people in the audience at all suck. And AEW is also doing it better and safer, and they're still they're doing shows outside now, which is safer. And and I just I can't. I mean, I like people on NXT. I mean, SmackDown Raw doesn't matter, and 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 New Japan wasn't running, but I like the the people on NXT. You know, a few of them. 
like Cross and and Escobar, and I watch NXT first because of them. But I mean, I go with AEW, and I, right. I think I think NXT WWE is still they're still fucking everything up. Like their directors were yelling at people for to not wear masks, you know, and like the COVID outbreak and this and that, and it's just I can't I can't say they're doing it better when hey, hey, pal. Not. You didn't know my plan, pal. Uh, we got the uh, uh, competition's champion. We gave him the COVID because none of us wore masks. And now they uh, got a champ. They don't got a champ. Yeah, it's like <laughs> WWE <laughs> had you know over thirty people test positive. Awesome. They didn't want to. They didn't want their people to say anything. They're not announcing anything. Whereas AEW says our champ, who has a match we're promoting, might have it. So he's not even going to get on a plane to come and get tested. Like, I, I just, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just a lot more behind EW as a company, and I enjoy their shows, even though some aren't as good. Okay, I'm, so but I'm happy Wednesday nights either way. All right, I gotta say that there is something new coming up for people. Um, that it's going to be Thursday, July 9th. Uh, since so right after the Thursday after this show goes up, okay. Vanguardia Lucha Libre joins independent wrestling television. Okay. So this uh, promotion I'm recommending, even though I haven't seen any of their shows yet, because it features some of our favorite people from Zona Bente Trace. It has Ciclope, not the WCW guy. He's based on the X-Men character. Don't tell anyone, Jim. Medio Extremo and Drastic Boy, which has the dumbest spelling of the word drastic I have ever seen in my life for his name. With a Z and a K. Yes, yes, yes. He he manages to get both a Z and a K in drastic. It's all about Scrabble, baby. Yeah, that's right. For for those American listeners, uh, which is pretty much all of them of this show, uh, a Z means Z. So, um, so the main event of the show that they're showing, it's actually from October, 2019. It's headlined by Ciclope and Medio Extremo versus Arrow Boy. Hey, that's dope. Yeah. And Violento Jack versus Crazy King and Lunatic Fly with Japanese wrestling legend Shima in action. That sounds so decent. He hasn't been on AEW forever, but he was at some lucha promotion that might only have 10 people in the audience well when i mean when was that was that filmed recently uh october of last year so okay. so it was, it was pre-corona been, yeah it's since he's been on aew though oh well, true but i mean look people take other work that are on aew still some of them anyway my my take on it is during corona i really liked um it was really hard for me to watch any of the empty arena stuff. I, I, I thought that a I thought that yeah. AEW's first empty arena show that they did at Daily Plaza or whatever that place is called wasn't good, and then they went into the Atlanta studio or whatever. Um, and I thought that they were doing production better than everyone else, even though the matches were kind of lame, just because they had a few people standing around clapping it up. And I think that everybody else following that style was smart because now I think that NXT with the small crowd or the performance center guys in the background makes that show the better one. I Whereas have, at hey, first AW was the only one that I could even tolerate watching the, the WWE honestly, shows were way too quiet. It just bothered me. It hurt. The I, whole couldn't, thing. I couldn't even get into the AEW empty arena shows, but one promotion that did empty arena shows great was DDT because I'll tell you something. WWE well, the action is on a different level than DDT though. Yeah, see, it's it, it all boils down to this, Justin. WWE is trying all these new things. AEW is trying all these new things, right? But yeah. they're a bunch of cowards, Justin. You know why? Why? Neither of them would have someone getting hit in the asshole with an exploding electrified barbed wire baseball bat, would they? Woo! But Dan Shokudino took that Stop shot. Right in, the right in the woo! Well, I'm going to end it right there. And until next time, stay calm and stay in the mix. Venus. Venus.